Yeah, 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 Ah, dear listener, before we dive into the depths of the Red Solo Talk podcast, remember, the views and opinions expressed here are just that, views and opinions. They belong to their speakers and not to the universe at large. So sit back, enjoy, and always think for yourself. Red, yellow... (laughs) Red solo talk. Red solo talk. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Back at it again. This is Red Solo Talk. Uh, Another episode of Red Solo Talk. I am your host and the host that know the most, Manny. And we got a special family edition of Red Solo Talk. We got Manny's brother, JD, third time's the charm, third third appearance. Hello, How you everyone. feeling, JD? And mm-hmm. special, special guest, Mel. Mel in the house, my lovely original, the first, the oldest niece. How you feeling, <laughs> Mel? Are you the OG? I'm feeling pretty good. I'm pretty excited, yes, though. But it can't be called good. Red Solo Talk without having Red Solo Cups. Yes, sir. And this episode, or at any episode, we usually try a cocktail, a whiskey, a beer, a vodka, tequila, you name it, we'll try it. And this episode, we got an 18-year-old in the house. That's right. So for our very first time, no alcohol. So... Hopefully we last <laughs> to the end of the episode without making a fool of ourselves like I'm, we I'm pretty sure we do. So yeah, so what did we try as an alternative? We tried kava, kava tea. Um I was first introduced to kava by myself. I was looking for uh alternatives to alcohol so I can have a liver later. And uh this is my first time, so I'm excited. I'm excited. Hopefully it uh it can replace tequila. So what 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 Nothing do you know? Yeah, we're gonna replace right. All right, so I'll just, I'll Damn say right. you were speaking before we recorded. You were mentioning some things. You spit out some facts about kava that you understood. Uh, the only things I remember were that it's a central nervous system depressant, and uh, at high levels, it uh, g- it um, gives you euphoria and I like not that. hallucination. It's a uh, euphoria and uh, something else. Oh, Sed- sedation. sedation. All right, cool. I like that too. I think. Right? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> oh, I learned some history of it. It's uh, been used for thousands of years in the Pacific Islands. That's right. And uh, for ceremonial, social gatherings, and they call it nature Xanax. So, yeah. Uh-oh. some of the things that I found personally, <laughs> I found interesting about it is first, there's, it's a reverse tolerance. So you have to. The more you drink it, the quicker you feel you feel the effects with further and further drinks because your like body meditation almost yes your body kind of builds up the reaction to it so it's a reverse tolerance so they were even saying that we might not feel anything oh. um, we might not feel anything uh, the first time drinking it and the bar except disgust yeah the oh bar, I felt something my taste buds dying okay yes yeah, so that's another thing uh, <laughs> I did read about a tingling a numbness of the oh, tongue yeah. I had that's so I felt that or you did you I did yeah so audio and I are currently still drinking it a hundred percent JD yeah. and Mel kind of chickened out they didn't even finished their first cup we so said it, hell no it, it to is that. a learn uh, an acquired taste it's an acquired taste you know um this is a I PG 13 episode <laughs> but the numbness diff definitely reminded me of similar experiences ah I said, oh, what is this the, uh, your Colombian roots <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah, similar uh, tongue sensation. And uh, another thing I found interesting about it is it's kind of like a downer and an upper in one. So usually it's one or the other. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like mellows you out, reduces anxiety, like kind of like puts you to, in a at lull ease. where you can at ease, where you can, you know, relax and get a good night's sleep. But at the same time, you feel euphoric and mm-hmm. alert. Mm. So your body don't know what to do. So that's why I'm interested. I, that's why I was interested in trying it. So uh, for me, it tastes uh, really bad. Um, I did purchase this and acquire this for the episode. And 
I asked for a flavor thinking it would be help. And the flavor I chose was lavender because the hippie dude told me <laughs> lavender is an amazing mix. So I kind of regret doing it now. Hell? It still tastes bad. What, what, so what? I want to know what it tasted like raw. What is lavender supposed to taste like? I never. T- Flowers. I never had, it, right. No. OK. <laughs> so First Watch <laughs> makes the purple haze drink that uses lavender. And I love it. So when I heard lavender, I, I associated that with the lavender drink at First Watch. And then I was like. I have to try it. Could any flavor actually help this, though? I don't know. He said, like, I don't recommend passion fruit because it would be too strong. And I'm thinking, maybe I wasn't clear enough in what I was <laughs> trying to do here. Because now that I'm thinking about it, he doesn't know, you know, maybe. I think I would have liked passion fruit. Yeah, exactly. Fruit. I would have liked something overpowering. Yeah, the I ain't going the, the passion fruit sound like a good idea. And I should have known because he said, I like it. Like, I like the he flavor. Likes it raw? Raw, yeah. I like the flavor natural. But if he had to recommend something, so I was like, maybe you were the wrong person to ask. So. My bad, but it's a purist. We're gonna see how it makes us feel if we feel anything, because we have to build up this reverse tolerance. So that's my thoughts on the. I should have been drinking it. <laughs> that's why. I, that's why I, started, I poured it once we got here. Uh, oh, my take on it, uh, pretty much the same thing. You know, my mouth went numb. That was an interesting uh, sensation. Um, it tastes earthy, but you know the second the second round, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, if it wasn't for the the, the numb sensation, mm-hmm. I probably would drink it. it Having your tongue numb definitely helps. It does. It helps make the second cup taste better. <laughs> I, and you know, it's, it's kind of sweet. I'm kind of like, you know, it's 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 an acquired taste, but you know, I also drink tequila, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mel, you are pretty much one of the main reasons why we're drinking kava tea this episode, <laughs> since you're not of age to drink alcohol, so don't worry. There's no alcohol That's in right. any of these cups. No, not no, even none of that. <laughs> between these five walls. <laughs> uh, what do you think of kava? Um... I was like, I wanted to try something new. So I tried this thing, and the first thought, my taste buds were dying. I'm like, I'm going to see if it relieves. Yeah, your girl was wrong on that. <laughs> I'm like, I've tried some nasty shit, but this is just... Mm. So it you, was just horrible. You, you won't drink it again? No, I think, like, because I like trying new stuff, like new drinks, whether new things, that's just me as a person. But that drink was like... Yeah, we're not going to make this enjoyable. <laughs> okay, so it's not so bad that I wouldn't do it for a bet. <laughs> well, I mean, it, yeah. It all depends on what Mary, ha- I wouldn't do for a bet. It all depends on what happens <laughs> to me later. That is a good point. If anything at all. <laughs> if anything. So, at all. a lot of people go to the bars, the, these kava bars. They didn't have alcohol at all. They only sold kava drinks and kratom drinks. Mm. And they had like live music. And it kombucha. was pretty it was a pretty chill spot kombucha. in downtown Hollywood, uh Twisted Roots uh, Kava Brewery. Oh, shit. Sponsor us. Sponsor us. <laughs> um, yeah, giving y'all promotion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, Mel was the original guest for the episode. JD came. uh was an afterthought. No offense. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <None taken. laughs> so Mel did give us some interesting topics. But before that, introductions. Like We kind of didn't let you really get into it. Before we get into your very thought-provoking topics, let's get a little bit more insight into who is Mel. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Melody, or nicknamed Mel, as you can see on the cuffs. I am the niece of these two people right here, my uncles, and I guess I'm doing a little promo. I also got a podcast of my own, so okay. if you want to, so if you want to check it out, it's called Life with Mel. Your girl just talks about different things in her life or things that she feels like she can have an opinion on and just express it without a Karen coming in. <laughs> <laughs> it's available everywhere you get your podcast from. All right, we'll, ha- we'll definitely have links down below. Uh, definitely. Yeah, and anyone can watch it. There's no content rating. Like, everyone can watch it. Like, you could probably sit- watch it with your mom, and she's in the room and stuff like that. What, what, t- oh, what topics do you cover? The t- Originally, it was going to be a mental health podcast because that's, like, a platform that I really want to spread awareness to. But then... Now it's like rant to like miscellaneous, so like any topic that comes to mind. That's dope. All right, dope. check out the link down below. Show some love. Show some love to the young content creators, man. Oh. That's awesome. Well, let's let's get awesome. into it because you saw the we all saw the list of topics and uh, there's some good ones. So right off the top, funniest bad habits. <laughs> you gonna put audio on the spot? 
This dude is crazy. I got the sound effects. I got the sound effects. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting here like, man, I'm going last because I, I don't know if I don't, I don't know if I would define him funny. Mm. So that's the thing. Is like funny to who? I, that's a very good point. <laughs> funny is, you know, as I'm reading the topic, I'm like, damn, I, maybe I should have thought about this. <laughs> no, I think it would be like funny, like if 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 it's funny to like yourself, but like some. Like funny to someone else, like they would think that's maybe funny. like that nervous laughter where you <laughs> yeah. shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> oh, uh, I got an ill laugh, or probably, but that's not like a bad habit. Mm. Mm. I mean, mean, I got one that's not really a bad habit, but you ask my wife, it's a bad habit. Uh, what is it? <laughs> Anytime she's doing something, like uh, for example, she's making something in the kitchen. I have to put things back where they go. They can't just be there. For mm. them. So let's say we're using salt and pepper for something. I put it back, even though the next step requires salt and pepper again. And then I'll just bring it back out. And it's funny to me because she gets pissed off at it. But <laughs> I guess it's a bad habit for her. So we go, you have to do an OCD episode on mm. on Mel Life with Mel. Yeah, the Life, Life with Mel podcast. Life with Mel. It just like bad. One thing about this, because I, I thought about some of these topics, too, so I just want to say I actually have two bad habits that I had thought of. That they're pretty funny to me, but I think they might be funny to other people. It's like two. They're kind of like the same thing. So the first one is like, I'm the type of like person that's with just me. I take, I'll like get something, like get juice, just pour it. And this is probably going to make some people mad at I I used to do this. I will put it back in the fridge, and it would almost be empty. <laughs> oh, you're right. That's famous. That's one. not funny. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's it's a definitely. serious, mm -hmm. a serious yeah. offense. Oh yeah. That's right. yeah, I, yeah, that's the eleventh commandment. <laughs> that is. Right. Thou shalt not put half empty things back in the fridge. <laughs> that's 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 a good one. Well, any other bad habits? Mm. I wouldn't say it's a bad habit, but I would say I, I used to, like, bend my nails a lot. I don't mm. think it's a bad habit. Oh, I did that one. Yeah. Well, now you can't. Well, now you can't because you got a long one. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, that's just a horrible bad habit. It's, it's a bad habit. It's a definitely oh, yeah. a bad habit. I have a, a funny bad habit. Whenever my whenever I do anything, let's say I do something once, it's, like, really loud or something funny, crazy, just because I'm bored, and my girl gets, like, annoyed and says, like, you know, like, stop. Then once I'm told, like, like stop! I, like it's annoying. Oh, oh well then yeah. Then, then I, I gotta I, just keep going for like I, an extra I, five times. I throw my hat like I like to antagonize people. Oh yeah, okay. so oh, I right. definitely That's have that bad, bad habit. habit. Uh, sure. um, uh, interesting. I've never admitted this. Uh, an interesting temporary bad habit that I had was I used to drive Uber Eats, and I never you'd got, eat from the food. No, I never got tipped. Sure. Never, not once. Not once. And I did it. Mo I did multiple trips. I was like, man. So I was so annoyed that for like maybe a week or like a month, a few weeks to a month, I wouldn't tip like what I would order. Kind of like karma, like just that some, is yeah, terrible. some petty, yeah, right. That yeah, was some just, petty, like yeah. like they ain't had nothing to exactly. do with it. Exactly. So after a while, I was like, man, what am I doing? I had like a really nice driver. I had like a really nice driver. Whatever. I was like, oh, I got you. All right, let me. And then I just started tipping again. I was like. I ever yeah. told you the time that uh, the mom of a friend of yours came to, uh, I was at Maria's apartment. Uh huh. And we ordered, I forgot what we ordered, but it was mm -hmm. of certain friend's mom. And I'm like, I you have smash? to tip now. No, I'm uh, like, I have oh to tip. My. I'm like, oh my God. I'm such an asshole if I don't you tip. You have to give a good tip. That was the thing. I always tip. I, yeah. I always tip. But this time I'm like, okay, I have to go a little extra this time to <laughs> not be an Because the reputation will follow you. It's not a, it's not yeah. a stranger you'll never see again. Exactly. Would y'all prefer um, if we got rid of the tipping culture? 100%. 100%. Damn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> know how you feel about it. <laughs> I, I think it's, you know, I, I kind of. should be on us to uh, yeah. subsidize their Yeah, exactly. Their We're wages. subsidizing their wages and giving. But then again, the restaurant already doesn't make a lot of profit, so there's a lot of things uh, that would have to change. Yeah. So it's, it, it's an interesting conversation. It I think, depending on the quality of restaurant, mm -hmm. at a certain level of price, you should just pay the wages of the servers enough that we don't have to tip them. If you're paying four hundred, five hundred dollar bills, yeah, that place should have. Because I've been to some to fine dining where they add, you know, eighteen, twenty percent to, it and I get shitty service. Mm, that's and not. It's like, so it's like, hmm. Oh yeah, that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Automatic tips? Yeah. No. Oh, so then when they just they put I in legally, the gratuity? They, I think legally they cannot force you to pay that. 
I think so. In your young age, uh, I Mel, never try to object. I'm gonna try. Have you take had that a, off my. Have you had receipt. a job before? I have not had a job oh, okay. before. I, I worked in a restaurant. That's so cute. You you've had a service <laughs> job where tip, tip was involved. Yeah, yeah. I got demoted <laughs> from cashier to back boy. <laughs> 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 it was better though. I made more money. I actually just realized that my how I had a job that you could tip, better. but it wasn't really common. Mm. Quiznos? Oh, okay. Damn, I used to love Quiznos. But we I found know, we found ways to get people to tip. <laughs> like Cold Stones <laughs> right behind us, and you know how they would sing when you tip? Help you use protection. At what, Quiznos? What? Wait, <laughs> wait, you got people to tip. Oh, but, no. Uh, so Cold Stone would sing. Yes. So uh, Eric and I came up with the song. I don't know who that is. But AJ, EJ. Oh. I, I don't fucking know. I think <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty dead. All right. So we came up with the song, you know, when people would tip. Do you remember the song? No. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. World premiere of the Quiznos tip song <laughs> by JD. I don't remember it. You're lying. <laughs> Another episode. Only fans. Ha, 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 ha. Or Patreon. Or Patreon. I or think Patreon. of it with a few. You get the oh, so you're doing OnlyFans, you said? Yeah, that's after hours. You got to pay for that. Yeah, OnlyFans. We do have OnlyFans because sometimes we want to talk about things that are not YouTube safe, but they're paywall safe. Link down below. So we'll move on. Underrated movies from any decade or early 2000s. Underrated movies. I'll go first. The Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you've seen it? Have you seen it Once. before you're laughing and judging? <laughs> it's a f- great movie, a lot of messages about life and philosophy. No, I, it probably is, man. You never yeah. seen it. I I watched it, but I didn't watch it. Oh uh, no, nah, so we I, yeah. I'm gonna bring the movie one day. We're gonna yeah. popcorn, just, we're gonna watch yeah. it. You know, <laughs> but, but you know what? That's a good point. I was gonna say the notebook. Ah, okay. The notebook. What'd you like I thought that was really underrated. Yeah, it was oh, underrated. Yeah. The notebook is super oh. famous. Is it? I don't know All how right. famous Devil Wears Prada well, is either. Yeah. 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 It's kind of famous. Yeah. Drumline. Drum yeah, line. I think Devil Wears is like in that section of like underrated. I'd go with Donnie Darko. Mm. You are the movie guy here. That's Damn, that's now you're making me think. I'm a 2004 baby, so I only know some of these movies. <laughs> What's an underrated movie that maybe we slept on as adults? Mm. Underrated. Oh, movie. there will be blood. Mm. Haven't seen that. I've heard. I've heard good things about Daniel that. Daniel Day Lewis. I heard of it. Yeah. I would probably say underrated. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to agree with you on Devil Wears Prada. I think that's a pretty underrated movie. Okay, pick a second one. So we. <laughs> 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 right. I was about to say. Um, I don't know if you remember this. It was like early 2000s. Love and basketball. Ooh, oh. that's a classic. I remember that one. That was was it? Uh, that's a classic. And did white people watch it? No, in the black community, we. That's what I'm saying. saying. So that's, that's a, a good classic. point. Yeah. So you know, like, Monica and Quincy. Then you know, I used to love watching all the black movies like um, Medea. No, 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 no. Oh, no. help me out here. Why? Like so <laughs> I mean, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it was like oh. where, where it was like an ensemble cast, and it would have like. Oh, Friday. No. What? The Nutty Professor? No. How ensemble? Like, it would have... Oh, it like, had, it had, it's, uh, it's got African Americans um, in it. Yeah, but it's like... Oh, sh- what was the one? Uh, is it Big Mama? No, they, they made a, they'll make a sequel. A wedding and a funeral or something? Yeah, like that? they, they had all those. Uh, yeah. Oh, but The Best Man? Yeah, some, they, all those movies. But there was the one where it was the popular one where all the dudes are talking, all the girls are talking. The, like, yeah, what? Uh, I think it's The Best Man. It might be, and then they 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 had a strip they they had a stripper part, and then the wife yeah. ended up dying at one point. Whoa! At like I'm gonna uh, find it. And Janet Jackson it, was in it. No, I mean when, when when it, it, I mean Best Man was one of them. I'm just I'm just saying. But I'm thinking of the, the this wood. movie that had like uh, Vivica A. Fox. Set it uh, off. No, no, no. That yeah, was, she was. That's man. a good one. That's no. a good one. No, I love Vivica it. A. Fox. Like I had all the motherfuckers. <laughs> they had all the. the had to do with the eyes, <laughs> the eyes, the jaw, and the jaw. No pause. The nose. <laughs> I think you're just mixing up I black think. actors. <laughs> <laughs> just putting no. them all into one movie. I don't we know had, what like, Tyrese, you're talking about. I think Tyrese. Oh, Baby Boy. 
this guy funny. is insane. Yo, you're the one that's failing. I know. He's just naming that's random true, black though. actors. That's true. No, no. <laughs> it's just that's terrible. <laughs> just Tyrese was in it. I was like, what movie was that? I think <laughs> Too Fast, Too Furious. It had all right. <laughs> that's what he's talking about. I think Gabriel that was a Un- really black movie. Gabriel Union was in it. See, now you're going crazy. I mean, <laughs> just, just, oh, no, it was definitely like A Fox. Was like the female. No, you're actually talking about. No, it's not. Yeah, I really don't like, know what you're talking it's about. It's almost like rules, 10 rules of something, or like. It might have been based off a book. What was the Steve Harvey book that be- became a movie, too? Uh, think Like a Man. Think Like a Man. I think <laughs> that's the one I'm talking about. Oh, that's what you're talking about? I think so. It's, oh, it's. I never watched that movie. It might be that. I think like a Is man. Kevin Kevin Hart in it? Maybe. He might be. I think that's that the best man. That's I think that people. Kevin Hart and no, Taraji. He is not there. in the best man. <laughs> oh my. Let's get off this. They subject. all don't look like <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. New Year's resolutions. <laughs> that you've kept. That, that you've, you've actually kept. <laughs> For longer than no one wants to no one wants to talk now. No one wants to speak. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't I don't remember mine. <laughs> I had to go back and watch. No, oh, for 2023? They can be in general. You know, I've actually never done New Year's resolutions until this year. Because I've always philosophically been against New Year's resolutions, the idea of New Year's resolutions. I, we've <laughs> talked about this before. And what was it? Um, no, the, my, the, 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 what I think of New Year's resolutions. Uh, no, so. Uh, oh, all right, go ahead. <laughs> I find it, it's kind of weird to, it's kind of weird to think of something that's good to do. And wait. And then wait to do it. Because if you think it's good to do, implement it right away. So I've always been against New Year's resolutions. I can kind of understand it. Because yeah. usually it's something that you should be doing, but it's hard to do. So what you do is give yourself a deadline where you're like, you know, let's say you're a smoker and you want to stop smoking. Yeah. But you don't really want to give it up right away. So you're like, okay, I'll give my, let's say we're in October. Okay. I give myself two months to get it out of my system. And then after that, I'm going to stop smoking. So it's like so, a grieving process. Kind of. Like, it's, uh, like, it's like you're grieving away your bad habits. Correct. To then start a good habit in the new year. Correct. I, I think it's that's like the reason at why. At the end of the weekend, before you start Monday, you just binge out. Binge on what? Oh, okay. Before you Maybe. do a diet. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, I diet. I can see that. Okay. Yeah. Like my girl and I will be watching the, the MMA fights and ordering food. and everything. Oh, It's Saturday. Let's get some fried Oreos. Doesn't count. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no. Um. <laughs> But yeah, so but this year for the, because of Red Solo talk I've, that we decided you know what let's do New Year's resolutions because then we can like have a New Year's episode and have resolutions. So this year's New Year's resolutions I've kept like a good sixty percent. <laughs> they're not gonna. They're not, they're not gonna is they're not gonna is, hear that. What was that? that was, that's <laughs> emojis. That's emojis. The emoji. Oh, <laughs> so I, there's the emojis. <laughs> man. Emojis. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's racial. He has his name like that. <laughs> so I have I have his name stayed with these emojis. So anytime he calls and it's like a Bluetooth and Siri announces his name, it, it speaks out the emoji. Every single. <laughs> I found that out one day. It's fucking that's hilarious. Just yeah, said like, mid skin tones. Mermaid. Like, Medium what? skin tone mermaid. Yeah, I was tried like, it. What the hell? All <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> theory to like call someone and she'll say like their name oh wow I... <laughs> oh did it fall down <laughs> yeah. oh oh okay all right. and <laughs> so i'll <laughs> i'll call like someone or i'll tell siri because i know that'd be lazy and tell her like call this person and she will literally say the person's name and every emoji. Because I, I put emojis. I still use emojis. I don't know if other people do, but I still use emojis. You can't on Android. I <laughs> overuse emojis. We are for adults. Huh. Uh, uh, but you, you can't, what, with emojis? No, because I don't an emoji overuse an emoji. Um, I don't overuse emojis. I'm like, Whoa. And I got at least three emojis per text. <laughs> <laughs> what are mine? Thing. What do you mean? What are my emojis? He put you no, I said per right text. Now. Oh, per, oh, okay. Oh, no, yeah, so so, so the ge- the friend that I had those emojis because he did it. So oh, he plays for the other team, and um, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> 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 and uh, he did like a thing where like, what what are your emojis that I want? What emojis did I want to Is be? Is that like what are your his, pronouns? What emojis did I want my contact to be in his phone? Oh, that's. What? Very invested. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the question he gave me. So I gave my emojis. Which were? It was my El Fuerte, like, 
logo, the arm, the sunglasses, little, and the, the thumbs little, up. What about the little purple devil? Nah, nah, nah. That's what y'all should have put. <laughs> I'm, you say I'm a little devil? Frowning. The one that's smiling. Mm-hmm. You say I'm devilish? I don't know. But a you, good that's, devil. That, that's, between you and, <laughs> that's between you and your friend. So man. then for him, I, it was the mermaid. So then, so he's, he's the, the only one that has that. Yeah, he's oh, the, the only one that has He that. just called? Yes. The mermaid? Yeah. Mermaid. Oh. But we're not using this track because this has the copyright music. Oh, so they're not going to hear it anyway. Oh, nah. I get it yeah. now. So he put himself as a mermaid in your phone. Trident. It was Trident, mermaid. Like King Trident. It was a <laughs> wave, Trident, but uh, medium skin tone, mermaid with Trident, wave, and butterfly. Medium skin tone. <laughs> medium skin Because that's how Siri, Siri gets very specific. I guess that's the official name of the emoji. Yeah. yeah. Uh, medium skin, is that like a Latino or like a <laughs> black person? Pacific Islander. Pacific. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you know it. Oh, exactly. <laughs> you see it? The mermaid makes sense now. <laughs> I love it. Use the chapters to skip throughout the episode. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. But, what was your New Year's resolution? Um, so I'll tell you the ones I've kept so far. Shit, I wrote them down. Where are they? Um so one was I'm, I signed up for a triathlon. So October 22nd, I do my first triathlon. The one I didn't do is a 3D printed gun. <laughs> Haven't started that yet. And you're not. Uh, travel and networking. Travel more networking. So this year I did a, a snowmobile trip to Canada. I went traveled internationally to Santorini, Greece. And networking. I've been going to all these networking events. Uh, yeah. di- different like grand openings for restaurants and different restaurants and bars and lounges around the South Florida area. Um, meeting like-minded people in the hospitality field. And, uh, end of this month, we're filming an, uh, we're filming this in August. End of this month, I'm going to go deep sea fishing for the first time Don't do with it. a group of strangers. Uh, get put myself out there. I've always wanted to do it. Are you, are you spear fishing? No, 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 no. Oh, you're going to be on the boat. On the boat, yes. Good, yeah. good call. Yeah, I'll see better. You, like, you're far out. Right? Yeah. So was, I'm going to do that one evening. Uh, oh, uh, gun safety and safety in general. So I'm signed up for, I have a private instructor that teaches me and my girl how to use our firearm. So that's another New Year's resolution I had to really get hone in on safety and just have safety protocols in place in your home. Everyone knows what to do and what situation, how. When. So by the end of the, but when we get to the New Year's, you'll have probably like 80, 90 percent. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So probably when we do the New Year's uh, episode for 2024, I'm probably going to have like 80 percent completion. Audio's uh, pretty much at 80. 90. Audio didn't make that many New Year's resolutions because we do have the 2023 episode. But he did mention um, you remember you said you didn't remember them, right? Yeah. But just yeah. Yesterday I started my um, keto um, supplements my keto um cmos um supplements <laughs> <laughs> link down below maybe <laughs> but no uh, it's uh, more content which if you're watching this you you see we have a few more episodes up um and ebook and you started an ebook i don't know if you want to talk about it at all or? it's up it's on um it's on amazon it was my first published ebook um you need a link the link below, uh, we'll put it below. It's just a, it's just a, a little bit of my um, my perspective on you know having to shave off being um, shave off parts of my personality that were more harmful than good. So I didn't I know it was up already. I'm out here, man. I'm a published off. Damn. Do you have the name yet? Or How no? long? When did it go Is up? Is it ebook only or do you have a print copy? Because I like you, the print copy. Uh, it's uh, on Amazon. You can get it as a, um, as a print copy. As a print okay. copy as well. I'll add it to my library. I could just, yeah. Hold up. You, someone could buy it mm-hmm. as a printed copy? Legit. And so you, wanted, you never promoted it. What's going on? Oh, no. You know, it's one of those things. It was just one of those things that I said, I, I'm going to do this one day. And I, Everyone does. Yeah, yeah, but you have to tell me so people could support and buy it. Oh, of course. Of course. I wanted to I want to revisit it, you know, and, and provide more uh, in-depth perspective on it. You know, it was my first. People want a first edition when you make it big and famous. I want it signed. That's okay. what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. So I still got the PDF on very <laughs> first link down below is going to be audios. New ebook, buy it on Amazon, available on all platforms. Or That's whatever. right. That Weston, right. can you do a reading or do you have to get like a publicist to set that up? 
Like, no. can you just go to a random library and be like, you know, think, I'm going to have a reading of the first chapter. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I think, think go I, to like an open mic. Oh, I guess if you go to an open Wait, mic. people. You go to an open mic and then I you read the first read chapter yeah. of your book. That's actually a marketing ploy. Oh, that's maybe. a good idea. That's a good idea. Depends <laughs> how long each person. Well, they usually get what, like 10, 15 minutes? I don't know. I've always wanted to try an open mic, like go to it and not perform, but watch. I've done open oh. mics, but as a performer. Singing. Singing. Oh, yeah. I want to try like stand up comedy just to oh. see how does it feel to bomb. Oh, I not think this I, kind of bomb. I think I would, I think I would, I would kill him. I don't know. With kindness? I know. <laughs> Allegedly. I would Allegedly kill them. In my mind, I'm slaying it. <laughs> any, any New Year's resolutions? Nope. Never done them? When I think I want to try it, I just fall off within a <laughs> matter of days, maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I don't stick to it. I actually have a few that I've stuck to. One of them was traveling. Just at a, a young age, I did the, it's called the luggage tradition. So at like the strike of New Year's, you, it could be a luggage, it could be a bag, it, just something. It, it could even be for like small trips, like out of the city. You do how many times you want to travel. And I actually have a story. I did it at New Year's because my mom's big Sorry, on. Real quick, what do you mean you do it how many times you want to travel? You like basically count like out of 12, how many times you want to like travel in that year, in the New Year. You just count out loud? No, in your head. You you count in your head. Oh, you just That's count a number. Yeah. Into the mic. Into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Continue. Yeah, so I did it because um, my mom, she was big on manifestation and all that. So I did it. And I I think I was try I was doing 12, but it was one trip for all 12 months. And I lost count of it, actually. My mom was like, okay, that's it. You're, you're like 10 at 12. I didn't really believe that it was actually going to because I was like, I'm very skeptical sometimes with certain things. Next thing you know, trip, 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 trip. I'm like, damn, this thing actually worked. What number are you at? I think now, even though it's, I think now I'm at four or five, which is a, a small number, but it's still getting there because there's still a few months left. More than me this I was going to say more than, more than <laughs> <Yeah>. zero. <laughs> That's a fact. And let's see, I think the second one is like, like um like with myself like trying new things that's one thing i definitely wanted to try because i'm very close so i'm very like i don't like trying new things i'm like i like staying in my comfort zone um what if i actually did like i like being out of my comfort zone so one of them was trying new things prime example right here i'm on a podcast <laughs> that i've never done which was actually on my bucket list to be on someone else's podcast rather than my own. So <laughs> hey. I did that. And the second was probably personal growth on myself because sometimes I think of like how it was when I was younger, even though I'm not like 20 or something. And I'm just like, I want to change who I am because I just want to grow up, but I want to be something different. So it's like when you decide what you are. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you always hear about the age, like, oh, growing up, deciding who you are. I think for me, I wanted to change, like, as a different person. So I wanted to, like, pretty much change. Like, how everyone says new year, new you, I kind of wanted to stick to that. And it's helped, like, I was a yeah, very different, like, I feel like in the past, the person that I was was very, like, closed and guarded. Now it's just I have... I'm now big on acceptance. So I sometimes it's like I don't accept certain things, but then on the other half, it's like I accept them and I just go because then I have this big thing on. I don't want to look back like 20 something years from now and be like, oh, what if I did do it? So I've actually done that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I nice. like it. I like Definitely. it. Definitely. Definitely. So, you know, segue. <laughs> I'm going to change the order because that inspired me to skip to go to this. In pursuit of changing, progressing, changing for the better. Best advice you've ever been given versus the not so good advice you've been given. Or the worst advice, in other words. There we go. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I think we all got to think about this one for like a good <laughs> minute. I'll, you know, I'll say... Um, Best advice I've ever heard. I, I'll say a few things. There was one time where I, um, I was talking to a guy like I, it's things that I love things that are common sense. 
but you, when you hear it, it just hits different. And it was saying just, it was a version of YOLO. It was pretty much saying, you know, life has no trial runs. Right. He was just saying that. Like, life has no trial runs. There's no, every decision is final, counts. Even if you can't tap into the wisdom of the future and make the best decision or a better decision that you would in hindsight, the decision you make now, it's no trial runs. They're all, they all count. I like it. I like and it. another best advice is, so I've said this a million times. I interact with the top 1% of the 1% a lot. But one more won't hurt a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the top 1% of the 1%. And I love asking this question. I always ask them because I understand hindsight is twenty twenty. Top or bottom? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you know, these are all older people. The number one correlation to wealth is age. And I'll ask them, what would you tell your 20 year old self? What would you tell your 25 year old self? What advice would you give your blankety blank self? And almost all of them universally, they don't know each other. They don't, they're not all friends with each other. Almost all of them universally say the same answer, which is don't worry about money. Worry about your health. Oh, okay. Okay. So that because once you have money, if you don't have the health to enjoy it, doesn't matter. The money's useless. And they all said they would tell their younger selves to worry more about their health. But can I say one thing? It's pretty easy when they all have money to say that. What do you mean? Like if you have money, it's very easy to say, don't worry about money. You need. Oh, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't mean it. They didn't mean it like that. They just meant it as don't let the pursuit of money Get in the way, sacrifice your health. Don't sacrifice your health for any other passion in life. Don't sacrifice your health. That was really what they were saying. Got it. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, Um, yeah, That's a good one. That's a good one. Bad (laughs) bad advice? Bad advice? Hmm. Oh, okay. I got bad advice. Uh, I used to know. Was uh, it from me? No. (laughs) Bad advice I've been given is um, from conspiracy theorists. So an interesting thing when you have conversations with conspiracy theorists is, you know, they, they, they're very passionate. Mm-hmm. And I had someone tell me very passionately with all the good intention in their heart, begging me, get, get out of college, you know, use up all your money. The, 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 the government is going to, the new world order is going to, the globalists are going to, and everything's going to be useless and nothing's going to matter. And this was so many years ago. And they're right. And, well, no, this is so many years ago that had I done that, I would have been homeless <laughs> for a long period of time. And I, and right now, your our money still gets us things, and college degrees still get you jobs. So it's like that was the worst advice I've ever been given. I don't hmm. say that much. That, that was pretty. Yeah, that was some pretty bad advice. Man. I <laughs> wouldn't have took that one. I have took that one. Um, good advice. I don't know if it was advice, but it was a very instrumental moment. Uh, there was one of those like simple things where it was just, it, of course it is, but it's just, just too easy. You said it too easy. Um, I was working at Tiger Direct, uh, in customer service, not sales. I should have did sales. And I had a, a customer who was a, I think a brain surgeon. He was a surgeon of some sort. I was like, oh, man, that's crazy. I mean, you know, I can, I can like never do that, you know, because, you know, I'm just one. I'm making small talk because it's customer service. But um, might have been a hint of truth in that where I thought maybe I was like, there's no way I could do that. And he simply said to me, you can do anything as long as you know how to do it. I said, oh, shit. <clears throat> and he was right. Makes sense. You know, so I was like, it makes sense. I mean, technically, I can fly a plane if I know how to do it. <laughs> I was like, all right. So ever since then. I made sure to be in the pursuit of education and learning my learning to do things and learning skills and not holding myself back so I can, you know, be valuable and skillful. Bad advice. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if I have the, the is, is it? I can't think of any. I think it could probably be like something that you at first didn't think was bad advice, but then you took it and it just made a turn for the worst. I don't take, <laughs> uh, you know what it is? I don't take people's advice. <laughs> 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 I, don't. That's the, I just thought about it. I was like, I never took anybody's advice. I just always did what I wanted to do. That's why, that's why it's a struggle for me. Yeah. Advice from Mel? Oh, for me? No, f- advice from audio to Mel. Oh, oh um, 
keep pushing yourself into the uncomfortable places or pushing yourself into uncomfortable, do the uncomfortable, uh, lean into fear, and uh, that's going to force your evolution to grow um, under those type of uh, pressures. <laughs> This is a very motivational episode. <laughs> yes, and, you know, proof is in the pudding. You were speaking off camera before we started recording, and you were a little anxious. You were a little nervous about doing this. You almost got an hour in. You're losing, you know? It's yeah. like, imagine if you allowed fear to not allow you. Yeah, I think journey. it was just anti like anticipation I had. I was like, oh, I've never done this before on the camera. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it my turn or it's young? Yeah. Okay, I'll go. The best advice I've ever been given. I actually have two. So the first one was from a very special friend of mine. And very special because now he is, even though my mama is going to watch this, it was from my boyfriend. So surprise. <laughs> and he had told, he had just said once and I heard it or he was telling it to me, and it was to, you got to be your own person. And when I heard that, it was, at first I was like, I heard it, and then it was, it was pretty interesting, and then I had learned, I'm like, oh, I, like, you do have to be your own person, because I, I used to always be like, oh, I'm afraid this person's not going to like me, I'm afraid this, or like, I don't have this many things to come with that person, I'm like, like, when I was in high school, even though it wasn't that long ago, I was voted most loudest, funniest story, actually. <laughs> and I used to be, like, they, everyone had their friend group, so my high school was pretty much, like, the same high school. You know, you had the band geeks, you had the computer geeks, you had the anime guys. Now anime's a huge thing. And I used to have the fear. I used to be very shy because I'm like, I don't know if this person going to like me. Or I would be like, I would be like, I might be a little weird. And then... He, my orphan, had told me that advice. And this was actually before we had started dating, so when we were going as friends. And he had told me, it, and I still to this day take that advice. And I take it because it's like, now that I realize it, I'm like, oh, I, I have to be my own person. I'm like, I can't be like this person, like this person. And I, it actually... I took that advice with me. I take that advice with me a lot when it comes to like friendships, when it comes to family, and now like when it when it actually comes to college too, because I'm now in community college, but like I have friends that are like in like those high level colleges, and I'm like, and then like everyone takes a different path, so I was like, oh, I gotta be my own person. So I'm like, because the I think the best thing I ever heard is originality is better than being a fake person. <laughs> and the second one would probably be it's an advice that I actually tell myself and that is change equals change is nothing bad and at first when it came to change I was a I'm gonna be very open to warning to people that get a little sensitive <laughs> <laughs> I had um I have um, anxiety and I have also depression. So I was like, I used to be, it was like very thing. So I pretty much was like, it was so much for me. And I had to realize the advice. I had actually took my own advice when I realized being myself was better. Cause I would never try to be another person. I feel like that's the worst thing you can do for yourself is try to be someone else. Because then it's like, Oh, you're kind of trying to match another person's life, but then you have your own. So it's kind of like, you know, people say you're a copycat and all of this. I don't think you're fixing it. So then I had taken the advice of being, well, being myself and to being, it actually has some benefits because now when I'm like, all of my friends, I'm like, I know they're genuine because I can tell people that I'm big into that. Shout out to my aunt who loves that. I think my aunt and my cousin, yeah, my cousin. I got a big family tree, people. <laughs> and it was, I realized that when I took that advice, it was actually good because I, my friends liked my advice. Like, my friends, they're like, oh, I love your advice. Or, like, they followed it. And it was just like, I'm like, whoa. So 
I think the, let's say, the worst advice I've ever been given was probably, I think, try to do what other people do. That's the, probably the worst advice I've ever been given because I feel like that in itself just has, like, if you, like, try to do what other people do, it's, like, kind of, like, oh, you're trying to match up to somebody because it's, like, oh, we have that fear, like, oh, we're not very likable or, oh, they're not going to like us for this. I think when I heard that advice, I was, like, at first I'm, like, okay, let me try to do the same thing that people do. And now, since being, since I'm 18, about to be 19 um, in September, so, yay, I realized that that advice alone was, like, it was actually a moment that I had where I had told myself something and I had rethought it to myself and hearing that was just like, I had said a sentence that was like, maybe, because this was at a, a period in my life where it was like, I was sad or it, some, some personal things had happened. And my, I had said, maybe if I was like, dot, 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 then. And just hearing that, I was like, what the hell happened? So just hearing that, I was like, what the hell happened? Because me, in my mind, I was pretty much saying, oh, I'm going to be like this person and not be myself. And I just, like, I... Because one of the things I cannot stand is, like, fake people. I absolutely cannot stand it. And for me, like, my mom had told me this advice once where it was know the difference between... Know the real meaning of a best friend. So know the difference between a best friend and a friend. And I took that a lot because sometimes they'll say like, oh, she's my best friend. He's my best friend. She's my best friend. But then, um, but then I, after taking my own advice, I'm like, okay, now when I say you're my best friend, I'm like, I know like, oh, if I, like, God forbid, if I die tomorrow, I knew they would be my friend or they would do that or they wouldn't switch up out of nowhere. Because I think we've probably had some experience with like people that are fake or like people that were not Oh, I'm going to fix this. <laughs> people that are fake or people that are, like, not genuine. And it was just, like, I've, I've actually had some experience. I, um, I'm going to get a little crazy. So a little tea. I, I think I lost a friendship once because of that. I lost a friendship once because of a rumor. So that was one. And just now. So it's, like, now I think the worst, the, I think the worst advice is, like, as a, in general, it's like for many people, it's different because everyone has a different life. But the worst advice is something. It could be like if you hear an advice, the worst advice that you ever have is something that you yourself know is different. But then I feel like sometimes the worst advice we don't realize is the worst advice until we've had like an experience. And then we think of, we like have a flashback to that advice and we're like, whoa, like this was they were like, whoa, if I took well, I took this advice and look what happened. It would be like, oh, if you had an experience, then I, you always see it in movies. Like it could be movies and different ones. You see the character has basically took the worst advice. And then from this moment, his life went like this. Like I'll see some, like I'll see some random TV shows, like some where like the character who was he or she, because we're all inclusive. Or they. Yeah, he or she. <laughs> they were... <laughs> I think you can tell them as personality where they were, you, it kind of showed who they were before and then after. Because the most of the time is when they meet a friend or when they meet a boyfriend or a girlfriend, because it, it depends on different scenarios, and their life is different after. And then you, it's kind of weird because you hear so, like a p certain person say, oh, something, something's off about this person or I don't think you should be around. And then, like, you would just ignore it because, like, you, you, you genuinely believe that someone's a good person. But then you see in the movie, it's like, they're like, whoa, mm. like, I took this. <laughs> it just made me think of that. Sim yeah. Simba. Yeah. <laughs> mm. What do you mean? When his uncle told him to leave. That was mm. Bad advice. He genuinely believed that his uncle had his back. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, he was snaking. It was one thing. I don't. I don't know if you guys have heard of the movie. Um, I think this is a classic. Um, have you guys heard of Atlanta? Please tell me you've heard of Atlanta or ATL. The TV show or wait, Ti? No, it's not the. It's not the TV show. It's a movie. With Ti? Yeah, Atlanta. I've seen oh, that movie. BT plays it every Sunday. <laughs> I think you watch and it. You play to it every it was, Sunday. You said <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it was a. Um, I. 
for me, like I see like old school shows. I wouldn't, I shouldn't say old school because I got like two old school people here and another one. But <laughs> it's like I see like uh, I'm like before <laughs> we even recorded this, I'm like they ask me what music I want to play. I'm like '90s R&B, and I think like when you see me, you're like you listen to '90s R&B. I'm like listen, I had a mom who had me listen to Aaliyah, who had me listen to. Backstreet Boys, well, I guess Backstreet Boys, who I mean, listen to like and all, sing. yeah, and think all these different artists and all these different 90s movies. Like, I know the movie Romeo Must Die, mm, that's a classic. And <laughs> I at least if you go back and watch movie. it, yeah, if you go back and watch classic it, classic for me, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like I grew up old. with like, yeah, it's, it's just old. It was like I one day, back in my urban days, yeah, one day I was playing, what was it? I, I think he might know this song, um. Ice, 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 baby. Hmm. And my mom goes, "What do you know about the song?" I'm like, "I remember you playing it." <laughs> like I was, like I just like listen to like my music because like I think when you see like the, the the generation now, even though I'm speaking as a part of it, like you think you think you know like a person, but then like you hear like they. Because I listen to all types of music, but it's 90s. Like, I listen to a wide variety. But sometimes, like, I don't mind having a little bit of, like, a Leo or, like, Destiny's Child. No, Trial that's, like, that's, that's, that's much commended. I don't even talk to people that don't listen to 90s R&B. Mm. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have different music for different like scenarios. I probably have like a bunch of playlists that have the most randomest names. Or like I got one that's like full of like '90s r and I'm like I listen to Missy Elliott. Like mm. what, what, what's it called? Um, Do Wop. Like I'll be like my mom will be like we'll be on the train or like I'll, she'll play music because if you have the Dominican parents, I have the Dominican parents. I mean I'm Dominican, so shout out to the people from DR. <laughs> I have Dominican parents, and my mom, I'm like, every Sunday, no, she doesn't really want She always plays music, but she always plays, you know, bachata, aventura, what. So I'm like, every time me or my sister or my brother, we hear, we're like, oh, she's about to clean. But then she'll play, <laughs> <laughs> but then she'll play like, different, like, like, my brother, he knows, what's it, um, I Want It That Way, Backstreet Boys, and mm. he's only 13. My sister knows it, so it's like we kind of we kind of grew up. For me, I feel like I kind of grew up hearing that, and that's just how it took. That's what's up. Your mom doing a good job teaching y'all the good music. But like do, so, do you listen to modern music also, or do you only listen to? I think I do. I do listen to you like Scissor. Who Scissor? Scissor. 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 SZA. Yeah, SZA uh, Bill. Good Day Snoo, though they're my oh, favorite track. Oh, SZA. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Love the Lord. Yeah. Even though I listen to... Um, that's right. Yeah, you never Dominican. heard her name out loud. Like, <laughs> she was like, that's how you I say it. I see it on the screen. <laughs> yeah, that's I how you to, say it. But once you said kill, I'm like, I've kill heard Bill. that song. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so I listen to, like, not, it's either 90s R&B or 2000s. So 90s and early 2000s, I do listen to that. And then I do listen to modern music too. And the funny thing is, nobody really knows. Um, my sister knows this. She actually found out one day when she, I was playing a song and she was like, "Oh, can I play a song?" So she plays a random one and she's like, "You listen to this?" And it was actually rap and trap. So mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I pretty much because I was like I was but born like the real stuff, not like what they call that nowadays, right? Uh, is it a mumble rap? Uh, no, because most of the, no I would say most of the <laughs> rap that I listen to, like, this is going to be funny because my mom remembers, you can actually understand what they're saying, but most of the rap that I listen to, the artist usually has a message behind it, mm. or, like, they have something, so it's kind of like the like same. Like J. Cole. Yeah, like, um. Kid Cudi. Oh, I love Kid Cudi. Kendrick Lamar. Childish Gambino. <laughs> Love yeah, Kendrick Lamar. Eminem. We're doing like a, I mean, no. a battle. Yeah, Pokemon Kendrick Lamar battle. and all of, all of those. Hobson. Hobson. <laughs> Immortal Technique. Yeah, so Hobson's oh, black Eminem. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, he is. He's the black Eminem. That's okay. Yeah, because I was, I was born in Florida, but I feel like I grew up in New York. Cause I think mm. I moved to New York at a young age, so I always remember like hearing like, like different rap songs, different, like a wide variety of music. And the rap that I listen to, it either, it has a message or it's like, they're actually saying something. I cannot stand, like, when you can't, like, if 
someone's rapping really fast. I'm like, I only know one song. If anyone remembers Buster Rhymes, and I think these three will mm. remember because they grew up in that age. Um, the song that he did with Chris Brown, and I think he was trying to actually say the verse. That's so kind of that's look at look, oh, at, oh, look at me now. Yeah, yeah. The famous. One. It is reason because I was like it's, Buster. Okay, where are we going? I thought we were going back. <laughs> look at me. I'm oh, like, that's, I'm, yeah, like, that's, 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 I'm, like <laughs> I'm like I listened to what was it? The, I'm like I listened to Biggie. I like if, Twister. I'm like, I listen to, do if die. I had to say between Biggie or Pac, I'm sorry, West Coast, I'm going to have to go with Biggie, but I do Ooh. listen to some songs from Tupac, so. I'm East Coast, but it's Pac. I like Pac. But I'm Biggie. <laughs> I, the past. Thank you. If I'm serious, I like Pac. If no, I'm having my, fun, I like Biggie. No, because there's a few songs that. I like from Pac, like the one, I, I don't know the name, but he's like, and since we all came from a woman, got her name from a woman. Um, I think it's called Keep Your Head Up. I like that Gotta one. Keep Your Head Up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it because of how he sang it because the stuff he sang is actually true. And what was the other one? Um, he, I can't remember the song name exactly, but it was a lyric and I liked it because of what he was saying. I, it was like, and since a man can't make one, he has no right to tell a woman when and where oh, to create yeah, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it's yeah. pretty much the same Wait, thing. say that again. If a man can't make one. And if a man can wake, can't make one, he has, <laughs> he has no right to tell a woman when and where to create one. When and where to create one? Oh, like yeah. abortion rights? Yeah. Can we say that on YouTube? Yeah, I think I that know. was one of the songs that people were is referencing. That what, is that what he's talking about? Yeah, I think that was pretty much it. And then, is it just me, or don't you kind of need both of them? I know, right? <laughs> That's just what I thought. I mean, nowadays, you know, That's why I said big. Yeah, and then mm. me, I'm like... I listen to some songs from, I'm like, I listen to some songs from Biggie, like Juicy, Hypnotize, Big Papa. So. That's right. Sky's <laughs> the limit. So if audio drops a B, you'll, you'll spit a verse? Mm. I'm like, my I, name? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, my name is Melody, but I'm not. I'm not <laughs> musical. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to rap. I thought, I thought you were going to rap. I was like, okay, I'm ready. Let's go. My name is Melody. <laughs> I'm a podcast feed. <laughs> hey, Melly, Melly Mel, Melly Mel. I have so many neck. I have so many nicknames, but it, I, I kind of I do like my name. The name is Mel, and I'm so well. Yeah, when I was like, y'all don't like this rhyme, y'all can go to hell. <laughs> I remember uh, what yeah, I told yeah. you when I was coming up for the name. I'm like Mel. <laughs> mm. You know, we really only have one more premeditated topic before we get to this free flow, and you can even, you know what? We'll do, we'll get this last time. Then you can ask us all questions. You start and you can interview us. You could get into the mind of some of old folks, self self proclaimed genius, and peerless genius. Imagine genius. You, you have three mentors here. <laughs> but, the, but the last topic is weirdest superstition. So I'll go first to say that I have a weird superstition that if I really want a team to win, and I or I really want a fighter to win. If I'm too passionate about it and I watch, well, you better not say they're going to lose. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've had those sentiments. Yeah, before. I was like, and then or if I don't like if whatever the outcome is, I wonder if I didn't watch, would the butterfly effect had an effect on the game? Or if I did watch, would the butterfly effect no. have an effect on the game? You watching doesn't change the game at all. You know that's why I think because I think about. That's not true. Any, effect, any, you have to make it some changes. kind of effect. No, exactly. For it to propagate, and it, even if it does propagate, it won't propagate in time. That too. That's probably why it won't work. Because uh, any different decision has a butterfly effect. Yeah. But it's just not knowing what it is, obviously, because you can't. Usually, you need a witness. long period of time to and, actually see it happen. Well, you never can see it happen because uh, it's yeah. a parallel universe. So it's an entanglement. <laughs> Peerless genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not totally wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't String theory. Yeah, but what does that do? With those, those are words. Those are words. Where does it fit with what we're saying? Entanglement. You got two particles. Yes. And when you know this one particle is doing that, yes. you know. Yes. All right, then. Peerless genius. <laughs> there we go. Moving right along. <laughs> Any weird, weird superstition? I'm trying to think of one. You ain't the only one. <laughs> what, what inspired the topic? I think weird superstition. I'm like, man, I think we all, I don't know why this kid's on playing with me. I think we all have like weird superstitions or it's just like, like a superstition that we all have. And I would, I think it was like, maybe they might that's, have some. That, that's fair because I don't really believe in um, the supernatural. But if I, 
if I'm walking with somebody down the sidewalk and we a side uh, stop sign or some kind of pole comes between us, I rub my hands together and say butter on bread. <laughs> It's a black thing. It's a black I've thing. never heard of that one. I've really? actually never heard. Like when you butter sp- like, on bread. Like if you're walking w- with your homeboy or your girl, if you walking with your girl and you let the pole split, y'all y'all gonna break up. Um, but if you walking with your homeboy and there's like a pole or like a fire hydrant, and you let it like break y'all. You're supposed to rub your hand and say butter on bread. Mm. It's so that you know, I guess something bad don't happen. But you know what's crazy? The pole splitting thing is one of the most common superstitions that I still see in adulthood. I still do it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't care to split poles and stuff. But it's the most common I've seen amongst other adults. Mm-hmm. The pole splitting. You knew about the pole splitting? Oh, okay. I definitely <laughs> didn't know butter. Oh, right. and then the oh, that the, the, soda, the soda can talk. What do you mean? Oh, you count, uh, not count out, but the letters. Out, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And what happens? What's the letter mean? Because I haven't Ooh, done that. Supposed to be the, up with. The, 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 na- the letter that oh, you your next like hookup? is going to be yeah. your next girlfriend. What letter did you last get? Be honest. J. Was- <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is M- <laughs> JD? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I don't. I haven't been drinking sodas. So the last one you remember, what's the last letter you remember? Oh man, I don't, I don't damn remember. Mm. You pretty much just gotta pick the letter you want. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I do that I, when it gets like really weak. I don't like, I don't want that letter. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what letter would you hope to get next? Stay tuned. Ah. <laughs> Try you're too smart. You're too smart. <laughs> too swift, baby. So Mel, and Mel, any questions for us? That's it. We, we can just free for we can, we can stop being robots <laughs> and stop overthinking it. <laughs> We could just. Okay, let's see. Since you two. Um, w- oh, this is a good one. What inspired the both of you to start the podcast? Oof. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> like a journalist. <laughs> Pretty damn good. Ladies first? Where's she at? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to stop playing with me. <laughs> um,. Uh, to be honest with you, I knew I always wanted to do something in the content space, you know, being from coming from entertainment. And me and this guy would have four to five hour conversations. I was like, it's the only only other dude I talked to for this uh, uh, length of time. And I said, hey, I, I don't remember the conversation, but I, that's pretty much how it went for me. Yeah. How was it for you? Yeah, for me, you were always more thinking about the audience and the production. And I was always more thinking about for the more, the more selfish aspect of it, of wanting, I want recordings of my hangouts, what, what my way of thinking is in this time of my life and seeing the progression over the years. I always get regret when I don't take enough pictures, when I don't have enough True. home videos, I don't have videos to look back on. And this is that version of it. And I'm also, I could say, addicted to podcasts. I've listened to well over 10,000 hours of podcasts. I haven't really listened to music on my free time in like eight, nine years now. Uh, so I thought it would be cool to have a collection of podcasts that a future generation of mine, because, again, I don't really think a lot of the public gives a fuck what we say. Yeah, you know, <laughs> maybe in the future we accomplish more things. We have you know more interesting experiences. I have them hanging off share. every word. So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but I, I, I still find those close to me watching it and enjoy it. JD is a is a avid listener. I have home homeboys that watch it. I can imagine my, my son being interested in listening to it or daughter or grandchildren. You got your niece watching it. (laughs) I got my niece watching it. So I've always, the more selfish aspect of having these recordings for as mementos, as recorded hangouts, as uh, not therapy isn't really the word I'm looking for, but (laughs) I found the more I watch them back, the more I improve the way I speak, the way I think, the way I listen. So yeah, so that's my motivation why I do the podcast. It plays a utility role. Yeah. That's pretty good. I like that. Okay, let's see. The second one, I actually thought of it for a while. It, it goes with the first one. What got you guys to name the podcast Red Solo Talk? Since we're using Red Solo Cups. <laughs> That's right. Um, to be quite Franklin. Franklin? Um, <laughs> I think the question is, what came first, the cup or the name? 
The chicken of the egg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 the couple of the name. Um, I think I really I think I was inspired because uh this is gonna it's not a very romantic story. Red solo uh red table talk. Yeah. And I was like, oh. All right, so we'll just do red uh, red solo talk, you know, whatever. Because I, I mean, in that time when I would hang out with this guy, we would drink a lot. So yes, that and I was always trying new whiskeys. Yeah, we kind of always. You introduced me to a tequila, mm-hmm. so we've kind of room, always right? vibed and imbibed, and um, yeah. So that's kind of what. It's a straight up bromance. Yeah, this is a lot more audio than my stuff when it comes to the <laughs> red solo. But then you know, I got into it. You know, and then I thought of these pimp cups. He did. And our, my guardian angel makes a custom name, so they become souvenirs. So if you want to, if you want to make, if you want to have one of these cups, we don't have the merch shop up yet. That's right. So until the merch shop is up, if you want one of these cups, slide in our DMs. Come on, and yeah, I'm talking to the the record our hangout, and you get to take one of these home. A factory, a child factory in Indonesia. <laughs> You'll get a lot of them. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's see. It's still gonna be on. Smart so, um, <laughs> right, you think so about the I actually have experience with this because but since I have my own podcast, whenever it comes, because he was the first person I actually told about the podcast, I was actually inviting his girlfriend to be the guest, and then he found out through there. So, ha- do you guys ever get like I call it podcasters block, like when thinking of like new topics to talk hmm. about, or it just comes to you? It happens during the show sometimes. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, not so much because I, to me, we're literally recording our hangout. So right. for us to run out of a, for us to have podcaster block would mean having a block in real life. Cause we would be having the same conversations yeah. if the cameras were off. My uh, JD and I be having random conversations about politics and, or challenging, I'll make a philosophical claim and he'll just consciously challenge every angle, which, you know, <laughs> knives sharpen knives. So then it makes it so when he thinks of all his creative ways to attack my point of view, knowing not, you know, whatever he, you know, I'll go out into the real world, have that conversation. And I have an answer to everything. Cause they can't even be as creative yeah. as, JD, so I never would run out of something to say I, or think about. I, I, I would say that since we've shifted um, how we pull topics, the the flow and the experience has been better for me. Like when mm. I instead of just like surfing the internet looking for topics and be like windmills, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So there was a time where it was Chat GPT mm. generated topics, but in this case, we, yeah, our goal is to talk about things that are already on one's mind, right. things you would already bring up to a conversation if we were hanging out without the camera rolling. Yeah, because I would say yeah. in my experience, I've had podcast block because <laughs> when coming with some episodes i'm like i just think of them i'm like oh this would be pretty good to talk about the last episode name i did was on mental health so it mm-hmm. was i was pretty much saying why mental health shouldn't be a stigma anymore and i was saying like different like facts about it or like i guess statistics because you want to go educational if you guys want to know the air date of that, it was. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, you're probably gonna put the horn on me. <laughs> twenty. Look, me even. Twenty twenty one, and I haven't done one since. Probably because I haven't been inspired yet, or the editing. Mm. But I'm like, I'll work hard if I have to edit. But it's like I think the topics that that when they come to me, it's like I think of them. It was audio only, right? Because I remember yes. hearing it. I don't remember yeah, it's audio only. It. Okay. Yeah, it was audio. It was on Spotify. And, yeah, and to give to give Mel credit, it's a whole other ball game doing something by yourself. Uh, it's I, a whole other ball game. I, I tried. I, I had all these. Uh, what do they call uh, some notions of grandeur? Was the delusions? Delusions of grandeur. I had these delusions of grandeur of doing my own solo podcast where I found myself having arguments or debates with people and. No one knows both sides to their own argument. <laughs> and when you know both sides to an argument, your own what your actual side is, so to speak, is such a strong case. So I had this idea of, you know, pretty much doing research on whatever topic, political, controversial, debatable topic okay. and d- steel manning both sides mm-hmm. steel manning them discussing both steel mans and then at the end the conclusion give my own personal take and 
just sitting down trying like actually trying to put like pen to paper to make that happen I was so overwhelmed with the amount of work it would take to do it right. And I was like, oh, there's no way I could do this without, like, actually legit. I would have to spend way too much time. Yeah. It, it, it would have to be a lot more scripted and produced. To yes. Do yeah, do you guys want to hear the story of how the podcast came to life? Or? Yeah, no, definitely. Can I just ask a yes. question? You know how there are d- debate teams in yes. school and stuff. Is there an adult version of that yeah because i just realized you would probably be good at that. arguments and oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, like they a meetup meet up, meet I, up I debate see you meet up. doing that like you know the, for the fun youtubers um you know <clears throat> like matt delahunty um or the uh change my mind guy <laughs> oh uh crowder mm. yeah, yeah yeah they definitely have like forums where they do like but it usually is depending on like if, if it's niched yeah. you know at one time i was like super into my um exodus out of theology um, and there was some speakers there that would uh, obviously go and argue like a Christian apologist. Mm. So th- it does happen, yeah, yeah. And they, they make some change. Too. Yeah, my thing is, I, what I used to really <laughs> enjoy debating was mostly politics, and I retired from that mm-hmm. for reasons that I might have specified on camera. Oh, I'm so pretty sure sense. we talked about after it. my snowmobile trip. Uh, Oh, yeah, we just spoke about it. So I don't really have the desire to debate right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't, you time don't, in my right. life. You don't have the... The bandwidth. The bandwidth. And I, 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 I probably, I would say, something that actually, you know, um, moves you enough. Yeah, exactly. I, think, I think we kind of beat the politic thing into the ground. So I was like, what, 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 what nuances yeah, are we talking about? I mean, if someone brings it up, if it comes from someone else in part, like whatever, I'll, I'll have a fun debate, but I'm not going to be like up to date, dedicating hours of research into, you know, having the strongest arguments for anything related to that world. So you'll debate them even if they have a TDS. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah. Damn. Uh, no. yeah, like, like, you know, I'll, you know, I, yeah, I mean, I'll debate anything about anything. I just don't care enough about the topic anymore. Exactly. So Politics you, in general. So do you guys want to hear how the podcast is? Yes. Because right I think everyone's interested in that. So it was like one day I was trying to find a hobby to do because usually now my hobbies are like reading. I'm a big bookworm. I got a whole list of books here if you guys want to know it. And Good I reads. was linked down below. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just trying to figure out because I was like, the big thing was YouTube being becoming a YouTuber. And I was like, I was actually going to become one, but I'm like, then I was like, maybe it's not something that I want to do. So I'm like, I want to do something different. And I was like, ever since I was, I guess, younger, but I'm not really older, but so younger. I always felt like I had a an opinion to things. And not in a bad way. I just felt like I always wanted to speak out against something or I had a view on it. And my debate teacher, when I was in middle school, actually said I could be a, a good lawyer, but that's not a career I have mine. So when I was thinking, I was like, what's something? And it just had hit me. I'm like, oh, podcast. And then came like, what do I want to talk about? And I was like, what is something that is not really talked about, but now in recent years has been talked about more? And it was mental health. And then I was like, okay, it's going to be a mental health podcast. And I think if you could ask me why it's mental health, it's because I feel like it's such a stigma sized topic that should be talked about more. Because we always have this thing, it's like, I feel like you never really know a person until you know the, like the battles they go through or what go, go through them. And it's a bomb drop. Yeah. I have a question and, for everyone though. <laughs> on that, doesn't it feel like we're oversaturated with podcast? Like everyone and their dog has a podcast at this point. No, because I speak for I follow a lot of podcasts, yeah. right? And everyone can follow the different podcasts that they're into. It's no different from TV shows or movies. You, true, you can't. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has their own different TV show that they watch, and then so each individual TV show or or podcast or whatever has their viewership. I think media uh, it, it, yeah, it, it, it it's changed media. Yeah, definitely. Like more people are getting information from um, podcasts, but I don't think oh, there's. Like, a, I'm an early adopter. <laughs> that's right. I, I'm not a. Uh, I don't think there's like a podcast bubble. I think no. that there's there's the good ones, and then there's some that are not so good. We're in the good ones. It's extremely. <clears throat> Meritocracy. 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 It's very meritocratical. We're killing it. That's right. 
<laughs> Articulate linguist. Yeah. Is that kind of going on? Or? Yeah, of course. Uh, so, yeah, it was mental health. And I picked it because I felt like it's need to be talked about more. It shouldn't be like, oh, like, it's you shouldn't really talk about it. I'm like, do you know how many things people talk about that should be stigmatized, but they aren't? I'm like, pick have you list people and i was like okay i'll do a podcast because i wanted to do something different and then i was like i was researching how to launch it so i was like oh you know that you have some where it's like oh you have to pay and then you have some so i'm like i want to be easy so i actually use it's kind of like a i would say what's the word i'm looking for it's like um a website that I use, but it's actually called Anchor mm -hmm. by Spotify. And I liked it because, you know, you can make an account. It's free, which drawn me to it. This is not sponsored See, we by give, yeah, Not we sponsored, give, yeah. though. I'm about to say we give it a so it was we'll called, put it in the course later. Yeah, it was called, <laughs> it's called Anchor. And I really, I was like, let me, let me try this. So I liked it because of all the, of everything that it comes, like you can record, you can edit you can pretty much do and you can even add like sound effects and i started doing that in my podcast episode more remind you it is a solo podcast so it's just me doing it and i pretty much had done it and it was anchor and i liked it because it makes it simple but it's it doesn't make it like so challenging like how others do so it makes it like pretty simple and i like it because it's like i don't have to put it like this it when I make an episode, it instantly puts a link where it could be available. So it's like the second I do an episode, edit it, because I like editing my things. And it, the second I launch it, it puts like, oh, it could be available at Google Play. So then I'm able to like send the link to people. And like, you can listen to it anywhere. Spotify, Spotify Audible, I think, and any of the ones. Yeah, it, uh, Anchor distributes to most uh, streaming platforms. Yeah, I, I like it because it's like it can like it's able to stream it to other all these different platforms, and it's actually a hobby that I've actually I've actually enjoyed doing it because it's like it's like I'm a different person, but then it's like mm. so interesting because then I have I hear people and like people listen to it. They're like, oh, I like. I think it was um, their sister <laughs> and and she liked the way I spoke, and I like the more I started doing it, I'm like, this is actually like pretty dope that I'm doing it, and then he found out about it, so. He's kind of like the inspo behind it, but then I have these two listening. <laughs> I have both of them that listening to it, and I, I pretty much like it. It's it's just a hobby I do, and I pretty much enjoy it. Do do you do you do you prepare a script, or you kind of just get top? Most of the time, at first, when I was first starting, I would just free like. Just freestyle, just go along yeah, with it. So usually dome, I'll have right like to a topic and then I'm like, okay, so then I add stuff. So I pretty much just talk about anything. And now it's like sometimes I plan it and then I'll like type like just on my laptop, like what I'm going to say. Cause sometimes I'll say like, like those little mind things that we have, like, um, when we're trying to think of something else, I used to do that a lot. And now it's like, I plan it out. So then I read it. So it's like, I don't be like, oh, um, that's like that. If I get better at that. And now it's, I, I like it. I especially like the, the way I'm able to edit it. It's pretty cool. Like I'm able to put like little stuff, little sound effects, which is pretty cool. And the editing does take a little while, but I feel like this is my thing. Um, yeah, has anyone ever heard the quote, um, no rain, no flowers? Mm -mm. Yeah. It's pretty much this quote that says, if you, if you don't put in work, so if you don't like put like rain or like sweater to I think that's what it means, you won't get the the benefits of it. You reap what you sow. Yeah. So it's pretty much the same thing. You always so when can we expect a uh, new episode <laughs> of Life with Mel to drop? Life with Mel. Um, Life of Mel, the newest episode. Well, I've been in... No, I'm saying, when can we expect it? Okay, so episodes? when if you're watching this, there's a link down below to a newest episode. Yeah, so when... So this won't go up until you give us that link. <laughs> when can we expect it? Oh, my God, you guys are putting me on the fire now. Oh, uh, when can you <laughs> expect it? Because... Oh, you don't have to give me an exact date. Uh, oh, I know you. Trust me, I know you. So it's like... I know some podcasters, they have like, oh, new episodes every Sunday, every Monday or every weekday. Me, it's, I don't have a specific date. It's like, if I have a topic, I put it, 
then I air it that day. So it's kind of like a blog. Uh, yeah. A vlog. Yeah. Yeah. Well, much for a, a, a plug. Plug. <laughs> Coin by me. We just made it. Coin by me. It. Trademark. We just, trademark. Yeah. Yeah, we, so we just made trademark that shit. That it's actually because when I last did the episode, I was oh girl, you're gonna have to remember that. I was sixteen. I was sixteen. Now I'm eighteen, about to be nineteen. So a lot has changed. So a new episode will because your girl is now in college, so she has that. So I I think I do need a little hobby on my downtime. So it's gonna be fun getting back to it. But I think a new episode. Probably, if you're into astrology, before Virgo season, so probably I'm gonna be on it sometime or maybe August. So, okay, we'll I'll, I'll have to leave you in suspense on that one, but I think you guys are gonna like it. So, if you guys like it, yeah, so. yeah, we, we definitely <laughs> yeah. chiming in. We chiming in. You know, we gotta support yeah, each other on this uh, on the pod. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm like. I'm like I'm like doing all these different things. I'm like, your girl got a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the podcast with Red Telecut um trademark. Yeah, wait, wait, that's right. With Red Telecut um trademark to them. <laughs> that's right. So I pretty much the podcast is I like it and I enjoy it. So I have I have I would say the most listener this is actually something I found out. So it can actually the system that I use anchor, thank God for it. Not sponsored by the way. It can actually tell me the demographics, which I, mm. I think it can actually mm-hmm. tell me like the age of who listens. Most is 18 to 24, which is and pretty 65 dope. 65 year old black man. <laughs> Most <laughs> is 18 to 24, and then there's actually a not little bit. That. There's actually, <laughs> I'm not touching that. <laughs> there's actually 18, so it's 18 to 24. So it actually shows me how much. Most of the majority is 18 to 24, which I like because it's like. But you know I, what, Mel? I ain't going to lie. You just inspired me. We have yet to even go into the audio space. We've just been doing the video yeah, component. You ain't lying. I think it's time that we cross over and start, you know, figuring out, <laughs> you know. Yeah, the so most of it is 18 and 24, and then a little bit is like 6, 60, 65, because my grandma doesn't listen to it. Well, their mother too. And I actually found this out a couple of days ago. So it goes by, it also goes by country. Most of it is United States. Most and is Florida. Five in Bahamas. Most is, 65 year olds. <laughs> most is and United So most is United States and most is in Florida. But it actually tells me like where they stream from, like phone, tablet, like what streaming service. The dopest thing I probably found out was eight percent listen in Germany. Oh word. So I was like I was like I they're like, the good ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> what you be talking about on your part? No, so I was like, is this, uh, <laughs> I was like, is this real? Like, eight percent listen in Germany because your girl knows a few languages. I'm like, I know mm. France, I know some French. I'm not gonna say it, but he knows. But I know some French, and it was pretty cool. You once spoke Chinese. Fun fact. I w- yeah, it's actually true. I went to when I was younger. I lived in I think for a while because I w- I was bouncing around in New York City with my mom. We lived in Flushing, which is actually where they kind of grew up. <laughs> and I went to a daycare, and in the daycare, they taught Chinese. So there's actually, I don't know if it's still there. There's um Yeah, we have home videos. Yeah, we home videos. I love seeing them. Like, I love seeing them oh, as teenagers. So I'm like, I love seeing so them as, like, teenagers. <laughs> I saw him when yeah. he went. I saw him after his job <laughs> shift at Quiznos. I saw myself after I was born. So it's pretty interesting. And right there, we lost all our Chinese viewers. Nah. And I know real Chinese. Ni hao ma. Guruo sha. She, 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 ni. Mama fufu. I nah, think not real. I'm going to try to say this. Um, no Something offense to any, <laughs> right. no offense to any no, Asian. Mama Fufu is like so-so. No offense to any Ma- Asian or Chinese listeners. I'm going to try this. Google um, it, bitch. <laughs> ni shao sheng maminza. Oh, what's that? My um, toes are hairy. How are you? Oh. I was close. Like, I actually, um, so I know some Chinese, and, because that's one thing ni I want hao, to do. that's Chinese, right? Of course. Yeah, ni hao right. shi Ni hao ma. <laughs> Shih tzu. No, I'm going to say Chinese <laughs> literally. I had to so think about that I'm, for a second. I'm like, I've heard of that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, right. when that's I went to this. That's Chinese, I think. I had one. He was yeah. a Chinese dog. Oh. <laughs> so, when I went to this daycare, they taught Chinese. So, there's actually a I video of me. I don't know if it was a Chinese restaurant, because I know we all love Chinese food restaurants. Like, we all probably have our orders. 
Yeah, yeah. Wong's honey garlic. Mm. Mm, that sounds delicious right now. <laughs> You guys making me hungry. I'm you, like, you've I'm been ordering food lately, food. and during the episode, order some Chinese. <laughs> and I, it was pretty cool. So there's actually a video of me, and I'm speaking. I'm actually speaking. It was a paper, and it was all in Chinese, and I'm actually speaking it. Ooh. So now I was like, I don't speak Chinese because I was taught that. So like, you know, your brain gets that. Now I speak. I know French, mm. which is pretty cool because my dream city to go to is Paris. It's been my... Como <laughs> tapas It's been my dream city. Je m'appelle Jean Abbe. Et toi? We actually know French, so there was one time we actually went back and forth mm. in French. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Eo de toilet. I was like, I was about to say... I, I think you had did, I think it was an ancestry or something like that. Like, we all heard of ancestry and all of that. And I don't know if he had said it, but I think it... And they found out they were black? No, uh, JD is 43% BBC. Woo! <laughs> 44 and change. High five on that, baby. No. Yeah. That's right. Nigerian. So I, so I like learning, like, new languages. That's one thing. I feel like if I'm going to a country, I want to know the language. Because mm-hmm. it's like, it's the same thing. It's like, if you're going to a new place, you want to know the customs. That way you don't get yourself in some, like, thing. I'm like... I see it all the time. So Say that know. Greek word you said. I know a bunch. No, just the one that, you know. Opa! That's <laughs> it. That's it. No, Kalimera, good morning. Kalinista, good night. Efharisto, that's thank you. I would say. Efharisto. I actually have please. a favorite movie that's Greek. <laughs> well, it's not Greek, I just but. I say please and thank you. Efharisto, <laughs> He don't even know. He don't even know. <laughs> it's the same word. <laughs> it, it is? It's like aloha, aloha. There's a. I actually have a favorite movie. It's one of my favorite movies. I got a whole lot of favorite movies. And it's Greek. It's the language isn't Greek, but it's Mm. around like a Greek family. Big fat Greek wedding. He got it. Oh, I'm like, is that in Greek? I thought you were gonna say get him to the Greek. It was Mm. uh, yeah, my big fat Greek wedding. And I actually found out the third movie, because there's now two movies. The third one's actually coming out on my birthday. So that's a pretty sweet birthday gift. Even though my birthday is gonna be on a Friday this year, but that's another sweet gift on top of that. There's a restaurant in Santorini that they do a like a show, my big fat Greek wedding. So it's like a dinner and show. Mm. Sold out every night we were there. I never, se- I never seen that movie. They're making money. I, I seen it once, the first time. one, but I don't remember yeah. it at all. Same. Yeah. I know it's about a big fat Greek. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. It's the gist. <laughs> you spoiler alert. <laughs> all right. Your dream destination to visit is Paris, right? Paris. Yeah, it's my dream destination to visit is Paris. And it's been since I was 12 years old. So since I was a little, I mean, I'm still short. I was like 5'3", but. I mean, <laughs> you researched I, it before, Paris? I researched Paris. I actually, interesting, I saw a movie. I had come home from school one day and I just saw Disney Channel. I was a Disney Channel kid. I'm like, my mom would be telling me when I was a baby to go to sleep. I'm like, Disney Channel is on. So Lizzie McGuire, all of those shows. So I was a Disney kid. And I saw this movie, and it was called Monte Carlo. And it's with Selena Gomez. That's the only one I remember, Selena Gomez. And she pretty much goes on a trip to Paris with her, with her, best, with her best friend and her stepsister. But it's called Monte Carlo? Yeah, it's called... I'm about to get to Barbara. Okay, it's called Monte Carlo. It's like, called I'm Monte Carlo. <laughs> it's called Monte Carlo. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let me see what this is about. So it's called Monte Carlo. And she, her, the character, Selena Gomez plays the character named Grace, and her dream is to go to Paris. Like, she's been saving up for this since, like, freshman year of high school. So then she goes to Paris before going to NYU in the fall. That's how the story is set up. She goes to Paris, looks around the city, explores it, blah, 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 explores the city and stuff, and then she gets confused with a British heiress that's also visiting the city. So this British heiress, and they actually got... Selena to play both the British heiress and her. The British heiress has to go to Monte Carlo for like I think it was a charity or an unveiling of something. So that's why so that's why it's called Monte Carlo because she is they think she's the British heiress because they look alike. So right. then she ends up going to Monte Carlo and stuff. So I I think that movie and like it actually got me interested in her because I was like I saw the Eiffel Tower and I saw all of that. I'm like I saw it and I was. Just, it was like a dream. Mind. Plus, I saw so many pictures of Paris. And I'm like, that's like a dream city. Okay, <laughs> so I've I've talked about this with you before. It might might be on. Anyways, uh, 
there's this official like syndrome or or mental attack that happens that has to do with Paris and uh, more, more, most specifically with the Japanese. They'll grow up in their culture. Their culture is very polite, so they don't like to say or show bad things about other cultures. So the idea that a lot of Japanese grow up having about Paris is the very Disney-esque version of it. The very romantic, everything is pristine. And there's these people in Japan that fall in love with Paris, save their whole, save up money their whole lives, make a huge sacrifice to fulfill their dream of visiting Paris. And then they go to Paris and they see what it actually looks like and how it actually I is actually in 2023. Saw a TikTok. And I- they, they go crazy. They go crazy. They lose yeah. their mind. They, there's a name, an official name for it. You can Google it. I forgot it. Now on the top of my head, they're ancient. It's something like that. It's something like that where they legitimately lose their mind. There's an X number of times that it happens a year, and I'm just thinking about that because you're saying about pictures and stuff. So you know, it's like make sure you Google like walking through <laughs> Paris in 2023 or something, was, just to know what it really is like. I would rather go to Japan over Paris. A hundred percent. That's my dream destination. Yeah, because I want to hit them yeah, vending the machines. The funniest thing is I'm that it Akinabata. was my dream destination. Then <laughs> I, <laughs> teenage girl I saw this oh, TikTok. They got that. They got it that. was a TikTok. <laughs> I know TikTok is getting popular now. Like oh, we they got some been. weird shit. There. Ooh. So it was a TikTok of a guy. And he was pretty much saying, like, he was like, oh, you guys, he was pretty much saying, like, oh, you want to go to Paris, you save up, you do this. Let me show you what Paris is actually like. And then I saw that. I'm like. (laughs) like, But I think you could do that with with anywhere. There's no place, I think, that is just 100% Yeah, because I think most of the time Mm -hmm. people are like. Santorini. 100%. There's nothing. 1,000%. LA. nothing. Nothing. I, I don't think I saw one police officer, let alone a criminal. Damn. No, Nothing. I think, I think it was weird. I was walking around with, 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 with my guardian angel. I was like, this is like too perfect. Like, I'm waiting for something. There's not They're one, something. Not one ghetto something. person. They eat people. Not yeah. even low class. Like, nothing. It was, we, it was surreal. Mm. It was so perfect. I think with a destination, sometimes we see it. And then there's a thing now. There's a thing of overhyped versus okay there. So I feel like there's some destinations in the world that they're so overhyped. They're like, oh, Santa you have- <laughs> <laughs> pretty much one or two. They're like, oh, they're like, oh you sorry if you're to- from there. <laughs> we still love you. Yeah, to all our Mediterranean but fans. So they're like, oh, you have. Oh, like this is the dream thing, that- and then you have you. the <laughs> other half where they're like. You guys want to go here? Let me actually show you what it's like. Yes. And it's pretty cool. Like, there's like a, I would say there is a lot of like places that I want to travel to. What actually just got put Top on. three. No, probably, I'm going to say this. Dubai. Okay. And the next one. Saudi Arabia. It's not Paris? It's not on your top three anymore? Yeah, for real. I thought that would be number one. I know. One. I thought it was. So then I wrote it for you. <laughs> you did. You messed it up. If you want to go. You messed it up. So it was. Dubai. She, she don't even so, want to go no more. So it was um, Dubai. Because I saw a TV show called Dubai Bling. And I'm like, it's on Netflix. If you want to see it, they actually tell you like what it's like. And these are people that I think these guys would take a vest in. Not really. So it's people. It tells. It tells. It tells the story about millionaires and different millionaires. So there was one, one guy, he came to Dubai with, you know, with a girl. She came to Dubai and she turned small money into millions. And they called her the queen of Versace because mm. she helped build um, Palazzo Versace Dubai. I know that's kind of everything. And she, so she known as the queen of Versace. Another guy, he's from Australia. He came with like $500. And now he's like a multimillionaire. So wait, so you just go to Dubai and make there's an opportunity in Dubai. Yeah, that's what they say. Like, there's opportunity there, but I feel like Dubai is a man-made city. Like, the people made it. I feel like oh, is it they every all are. city. <laughs> <laughs> so Dubai, Paris is still in your top three. Yeah, Five. Paris. Paris is still there. I'm and like, then what's the third? The third, I'm gonna have to go with ever since <laughs> Barcelona, Monte Carlo. <laughs> it was so. It was Paris, Dubai. It was Barcelona because I saw the Cheeto Girls show. I was the Cheeto Girls Sada girl. Sada. <laughs> and then it like the Sagrada Familia took me mm, forever. That's to see beautiful that. to see. And then the next, like never ending. The next one the is um, Singapore. Ooh, Singapore. 
Wasn't expecting that I one. I think about it for a second. That's a Asian. country. Think, yeah, Not think, a city, right? It's a country. Singapore mm-hmm. is... Okay, I had a brain fart there. So. Yeah, I was like, oh, is it a yeah, country or a city? No. It's I, travel <laughs> destination, so it could be country or... Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I, feel, I, feel like like, I feel like if you want to travel somewhere, like, you know, you only, you only live once, just do it. And like, okay, it'll be a little expensive, but okay, you only live once. And let's see, the other... Destiny. That's three. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so you only got top three. Yeah, For me, is Italy, to- Tokyo, Japan, Rome, Italy, to be specific, Tokyo, Japan. Rome over Florence? Yes, because of... Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, your girl has something about Italy. Yeah. And then, um, because of Gladiator. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan <laughs> of Gladiators, and I want to see the Coliseum. And third is Sweden. I almost said it. <laughs> <laughs> and third is Sweden. Um, and if I ever become, if I'm ever widowed, don't die on me, mm. Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? The dollar goes <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to hold you, buddy. I'm not going to hold you. Top three? Top three? Um, Tokyo? Okay, area? Of course. Uh, Tokyo is definitely there. Number one. Mm-hmm. And then... Shibuya Square. That's what I want to see. Oh. <laughs> I can see you in Moscow having fun. I think they were telling him, that's Gdania. <laughs> uh, yes. South Korea. Gondola. Ooh. South Korea? Yeah. Not North? Yeah. Boy. Okay, so South Korea. South Korea. Tokyo. Tokyo and I gotta pick a non Asian. You can tell he watches a lot of anime. Yeah, I ain't gonna and, lie. The anime <laughs> and the anime hat. It's all the late. anime hat, everything. Love for you. Um, I just imagine you dressed up for K pop. I actually listen to and, some K pop. Yeah, I was gonna say Paris, really Now you got me thinking let's about Let's get Paris. some K pop in here. Uh, somewhere in Europe. I just don't know where yet. Okay. okay. Can I say all of Europe? Yeah, because so I want to see all of you. Yeah, just to, yeah, I, that that'd be fair. Italy, Italy so, is two actually Asians and Europe. two Asians and <laughs> European. Italy is actually another destination I want to go to. Italy is actually another destination I want to go to. Top three for audio. Who's already seen the world? Uh, two times already. Uh, Joe, play the Jeopardy thing. Do you know? <laughs> uh, um, Tokyo. Um, because y'all said it. I think Tokyo's gonna uh, drift. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not going to drift. Um, um, we also saw that Fast and Furious movie. But, uh, Tokyo. Definitely Tokyo. Um, Bali. Mm. Yeah, I heard they be doing a lot of yoga over there. <laughs> so I'm down with that. We know someone who loves a lot of yoga. And then <laughs> um, facing dog. You said Colombia in the last episode. <laughs> you wanted to I did. You know what? I do got, you know, being from Colombia, it's about time I go see my people. Are you going to bring a separate budget? For <laughs> oh, that was the whole budget. <laughs> <laughs> no hotel, no driving around, no food. <laughs> Say, just look like a king. <laughs> You'll eat pie. Uh, <laughs> question for JD. JD's turn to be on the spot. Which is why I wish. Oh man, we're, when we bump spotlight. up production, I want spotlights that you know per chance I can press a button, and all of a sudden like like millionaire, millionaire. Doo, 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 and all the spotlights. Like, you trying to blast oh, someone? Third it's, appearance. Yeah, that, yeah, that. Third appearance, and I was mentioned earlier about the more you do this, the more you watch back, the more you learn about yourself. Any takeaways that you've had watching yourself back all these episodes? Not really, just uh, yeah. <laughs> nah, just uh, <laughs> it's, it's rude. <laughs> it's, 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 nah, just it's you know. You Should have put the front back twenty minutes later. Nah, not perfect. perfect. No, no, no. <laughs> just uh, there's no point in caring so much of how you portray yourself. Just oh. be real, be yourself, and mm. it's fun. see how he landed was good though. How he landed was good. We're just like you know what I'm me, and this I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> of course you don't. I think being yourself is the best version you can be. That's true. It's easier. Mm. You ain't got a lot. Except if you're Kanye. No. So you, you don't <laughs> wait. Hold up. So you don't believe in self improvement? It's just you just float through just whatever. Maybe 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 he defines himself at the at, uh, at the, at <laughs> the way he want to be. Well, I believe in self improvement, but so you don't believe in like the max potential theory that we've discussed before. For me? No, we've discussed. Oh, yeah, we yeah, both yeah. agreed in this idea of you having a max potential. 
Yeah. If you were godlike and perfect. Recap for anyone who didn't life. know. It's a hypothetical that it can't be attained, but if you were Speak. to be godlike and perfect and make every right, like you have a max potential. Yeah. And then you have the reality. I'm the goal is to. I'm gonna do that in 2024. I actually have. I I had a story. You want to reduce that guy? <laughs> exactly, but you don't believe in that. It's just you are who you are. He asking you. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. You motherfucker. I'm asking. I've never thought that ever. I'm asking. It's a question. It's oh like, no, I don't think that. I think, oh, of course. Because you, you said that there's nothing to improve on when you That's watch back the I, episodes. No, because there's no point in thinking so much. You just he's, be yourself. He's, That's he's not twisting what his words. What I'm saying. Like, it's recorded. <laughs> Y'all be the judge. Right. I didn't say that. I didn't think there's anything to improve. I said I don't care to improve on anything. Oh, I just. Uh, That's okay. different. I stand correct. That's different. He got you. I see y'all been doing this a lot. Oh shit, he still gave himself. A you guys bomb. actually want to <laughs> not a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> give myself a bomb. You guys actually want to hear something with, with with what he said? I could have had. God, I'm the girl with Roy Stay. So, um, I feel like I do believe on self improvement, and I feel that's right. A word that doesn't for me personally exist in my vocabulary is perfect. Mm. It doesn't. It really doesn't exist. <laughs> like you. <laughs> it's not like it doesn't exist, but I just don't think I just don't have that word. It, like it's not something that mm-hmm. comes to my mind. Cause Shakira. I. That's pretty. That is, I I would say perfect is not. It's not a word that I like saying or I like I say anymore. It's not I, a standard that. Yeah, you it's would. not a standard that I have. Right. And I use. I would say I used to when I was in school. I used to be a perfectionist. Mm. I used to always like strive to like be better, but I just wanted to succeed. And trying to do that actually impacted me in many ways. It actually impacted me. Uh, shout out to another topic. It impacted me mentally because. Just like if you can imagine the pressure of trying to be perfect, it's just it's as in itself like the pressure of it is just a whole other world. Mm-hmm. So I've actually have thought of this. Um, I my pain tolerance it, it depends, but I I would probably have tattoos, and one of them would be perfect, but it would be crossed out. So it would be the word, but then it would be crossed out. So the word. And what and, would replace it? <laughs> so when people ask like oh why is it like that i would say because i am not perfect there's no such thing as perfect for me because i would say yeah i have it like that because i have a cross up because i'm not perfect no no one is perfect and then why tr- not not perfect without a cross out i don't know i think just this i guess the symbolism behind it would probably show like the way it's crossed out because i feel like you shouldn't strive to be perfect and i feel like there's no such thing as perfect so like trying not to be hard on yourself you would have to define it you yeah. know what is perfect to you it's very subjective but i think you should constantly be conscious of is though is to always be the best version of yourself yeah so when it comes to like perfect it's like oh i'm not perfect like there's some things I'm not perfect at, but I can improve on that. Uh, there you go. So that's what it's like for me. So I would pretty much say like, I wouldn't say like, oh, I'm a perfect person because nobody, nobody's a perfect person. But I would say like, oh, I'm not perfect. And there's things I can improve on. That's absolutely true. I just want to make one correction. Um, uh, let me introduce you to perfect. <laughs> 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 You know, you wait, know, I'm still waiting. Uh, <laughs> you got me. I'm you definitely got me. waiting you got for that. Me. <laughs> you know, one, one, uh, one piece of advice that I, I didn't cross my mind because it just became so ingrained in how I think. Take it was so bad when you were talking. I was like, oh, shit. shit is uh, I had a professor who said, and he handed out, he believed in it, so he handed out little cards with this quote that I'm going to say. Perfect and a little enemy of good. And a little key. Yeah. And a little key that he handed to everybody. And what it said was the key to joy is having high standards, low expectations, and big dreams. Bam. Bomb drop. And that really, you know, and I really, you know, took that one in like, high, you know, high standards, low expectations, and big dreams. That's, that's Did the key open anything? No. I was it's just the key to joy. It was symbolic for the, the 
keto joint. Oh, is that one of blank keys from Costco? I yeah, mean, yeah, uh, it was Walmart like one of those, like one of those, yeah, fake looking. It's like a, yeah, that's novelty nice. key thing. Low expectation. I still have it. I, I still have it. I keep it on my desk. I keep I the car. Little I key. knew you had it. Yeah, I knew you had so it. It was one of those things where I was like, that's so true. Because and I, you know, it resonated with me um, at that moment or later on. No, no, just like at that moment, just you know, just since then, I always thought about it and I repeated it to people when it comes up naturally in conversation. Just giving advice. But you let them know that your your, your, your professor told you that. Oh, uh, I mean, oh, so you that's not credit. like no, I don't take credit or anything. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah. No, that's how you want to do it. I, yeah, I don't. <laughs> 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 but no, uh, yeah. Hey, so <laughs> you know, it's the same thing. You know, high standards, but low expectations, because you, you know, perfection. You high standards. Those are things you could control. Low expectations, things you can't control. Sure. Big dreams, so you. I, I, I would say aim, I live by that mantra. What's the aim? Uh, yeah, expectations. I feel like with expectations, like we probably have heard of this more multiple times. In life, you're not always going to get what you want, or you're not going to get the answer you always expect. That's facts. <laughs> and one of my favorites, perfect is the enemy of good. Mm. Mm, unpack that for me. Perfect is the enemy of good. There are times where you want something to be so perfect and you work so hard for it that it ends up like you can't even complete it because uh, mm-hmm. that happens often for perfectionists where they want it You're to right. be perfect and they You're just right. never finish it. That's a good one. It's a, it's, it's a cousin of paralysis. from a That's paralysis. what it, right. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was giving me to feel. Mm-hmm. I like that one. I'm going to take that one. I like <laughs> Wasn't mine to begin with. <laughs> I was actually gonna say, if you guys agree with this, just say yes or no. If you agree, no. I'll hand up. <laughs> uh. Ready? Overthinking equals fear. Overthinking equals fear. When or, you say overthinking, do you just mean analyzing something? No, or like overthinking equals fear. Like if you overthink. Things like it equals it's the same thing as fear. Like if you mm. I think it depends. I can see a correlation. Yeah, it's like a correlation. The more you fear something, the more you'll overthink fear, it. Probably. I yeah, because I would yeah. say for myself, I would say I, I am an overthink. Like there's some things that I overthink mm-hmm. sometimes. But Everything then yes. I can see overthinking fueling fear. Yeah. So then or it was like fear is the same as overthinking. Is fueling well fear the is the effect and um, no, it fears the causation and overthinking is the effect of it. So it's like a symptom of fear. Yeah, because I would say myself, I tended, I still do sometimes, I tend to, because I, you know, I have anxiety, so I overthink sometimes. And I had thought, there's some, sometimes I would be like, oh, I would overthink something. So I'm like, should I really do this? I'm like, oh, like, what if I do this? Like, oh, what's going to happen? This is going to happen. And then I realized, I had told myself, you overthinking is the same as you being afraid of something. So then when I stopped overthinking, even though sometimes I do have trouble with that, and when I stopped overthinking things and just did it, it was pretty much me saying like, oh, I don't have this fear anymore. So that's why I kind of think like overthinking is the same as fear because like mentally. They go together. They yeah. go together. <laughs> definitely. They definitely go together. Self-awareness is the foundation to improvement. Just made that up right now. 100%. I think this should be marked motivational episode. We've ever done. <laughs> Motivations with it. Mel. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. Manifest with Mel. Man. Mel's manifestation. I actually love my nickname. I love my nickname. It's funny. Mel? Yeah. It's either Mel or. I thought it was Scary Spice. Mel C. Mel B. No. Mel B. Mel C was sporty. And I was thinking. Well, well, you said Melody, so I was thinking Mel yeah. D. Oh, okay. like my, thinking, it could be, be like, Mel-A? my nickname no. could also be, I was Mel like, D for when Melody, I was thinking Melody, for that yeah. cup, because if you guys ever know, ever don't know how they think of the names on the cups, which is pretty cool that they actually do that, you just say a nickname, and I was like, do I do Mia? Because my initials, if you spell it mm, out, it means Mia. Yeah. Or Mel, and I was like, when I was in school, I actually... Everyone called me Mel because sometimes some, some people will say my name wrong, but I'm like, oh no, if, you know, like people say things differently. So I would say Mel. So everyone would know me as Mel. They would be like, oh, hey Mel, you want to, hey Mel. And that was just it. So then I was Mel. 
What what incorrect ways do people say your name? Like sometimes I'm called Steven or Oscar. Sometimes <laughs> audio is called Daquan or Daquan. nobody's ever called me that nigga. Okay, ready. Um get ready to laugh. Um it would be <laughs> nobody's Mel well. so Melody. I look my name. My name's interesting. Melody, so it would be Melody. Or they would say Melanie. Mm, Melanie. That makes or sense. close enough. Mm-hmm. One time I had a friend. It was a friend in school, and she was writing Michelle. my name. It was a friend in school, and we were like working together. It was in a class, and so the teacher had to put us in groups. So it was like pairs. And she was asking me how to spell my name, which I didn't take offense to because, like, you know, some some people's names are long. I'm like, you ever heard a name called Wisdom Understanding? Who is that? That's an actual name. Where he at? I actually do <laughs> wisdom and understanding. <laughs> no, no wisdom understanding. <laughs> wisdom understanding. Yeah, is one it was full a name? classmate, and her name. I saw it. She was like, "Oh, my name is Wisdom Understanding," and I'm like, "You know, you hear unique names, but I'm like, including unique. <laughs> I knew someone <laughs> knew us. That was the name of my R&B group, baby. Unique. And where was, where was she from? I actually Who, wisdom, wisdom, understanding. I actually do not know where she was from. She was a classmate of mine, She's but I thought her, a, Elon Musk's daughter. <laughs> no, Elon Musk. Homeboy got another story naming his kids like <laughs> XL, EX, all this. I'm like, well, okay, here we go. Where do you like, think she was from? If you had a guess, South like Africa. what part of the world? I think because I don't sometimes I don't like assuming because I th- think assuming is also an enemy. No, so assuming say, is a part of being human and surviving in the world. Okay, Hunger Again, let the odds ever be in your favor. <laughs> so uh, I think she was probably... She melanated or non-melanated? I would say she was from the like the Caribbean island. Mm. Melanated. Maybe like 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 the Virgin Islands or Trinidad yeah, I, or something. Yeah, I was thinking Saint like that, Lucia. like Trinidad. And, uh, ah, there you go, St. Lucius. And so the girl, back to when... Her parents were trying to learn English. Right. Mm. Like they no, two I, words. I, I assume, like, I assume, I think she was from there. Maybe she was. I think I are. are, are Probably are. in their language, it sounds so beautiful. And then I think that could when be they it. translated what, it, what, what language? Or, <laughs> and when what? she, I took no offense to how she Her wrote my land. name, but she actually Her wrote name my the name. How did, she, how did she write your no. name? The damn bird? No, it wasn't. <laughs> this wasn't wisdom understand. So this was the girl that I was paired with in my class, and we were in group, so we were in pairs. She wrote my name, M E. So my name is M E L O G Y, like music. So I say melody, like music. Whenever I go to Starbucks, I don't know why Starbucks said name wrong. But music is M U S I C. Melody. <laughs> so my name is. <laughs> so my name is M E L O G Y. She had spelled it. I feel like this one is going to laugh. We'll probably be like, eh. M-E-L-O. It sounds good, right? Here goes the part that goes down. M-E-L-O-N-D-Y. Melon- Melondi. Melondi. Or Melondi. Melondi. <laughs> yeah, she's not, not that bad, actually. You should name your daughter Melondi. Melon. D. Oh, I'm like, I feel nah. like interesting story. Um, Melons are I got an interesting story time. Melon double D's. I got an interesting story time yeah, here. You're going crazy right now. Yeah, I have an interesting um, story time. I went to I went to Einstein's Bagels, if you've heard of that. Oh, it's delicious. I've taken you there before. Farmhouse. Get ready, homeboy. You're part of the Farmhouse. Story. Farmhouse. Never. So it was it. Um, oh. Einstein's Bagels. And I. When I was coming, I was thinking, I'm like, Einstein's, I'm like, I've seen it before. I'm like, where do I see it? Then I realized. Albert. Him, my lovely Uncle Manny, he comes in with it. So he'll buy it, he'll get it. Sometimes he'll get it for, as he called it, his guardian angel. We're going to keep her name anonymous. <laughs> and I was like, I want to I wanna try them. I want to see if the hype is like, if it's, if it's hype or not. Oh, yeah. So then I went, we went, actually, uh, it was after because I'm doing, I'm in community college now, so I'm doing school online, which has its benefits. And it was after my class had finished. So we went, we go, and while we're waiting, I think I remember what I got. I think I got an everything bagel. Here we go. I'm about to be mad hungry after this thing. And he got something. And I had, we were like talking for a while while they were making us stuff. And I had told him of a name that I was thinking about. Like if I ever had a kid, because you know, you have the things of like, oh, my first kid's going to be named this. If I had a son, it would be named this. I was like, my first kid, if it was a boy, would be named. Boy. I had told him, I had told him, Uncle Juan up here, it would be named. 
boy. He, he's not gonna. He, he's not gonna find out about this. D'Anthony. <laughs> and I That's had weird ass name. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, but I was like the spelling because when I told him how it was gonna be spelled, I was like D comma Anthony, but the way it was gonna be pronounced is different. Okay. Mm. So then he was like, oh, why don't you name it after me? Caesar after greatness. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, why don't you name it this this name? And the name was Caesar after greatness. And I'm like, you want me to name my son Caesar if I ever had a kid. And I think I had picked that name because I picked that name originally. It was like, I liked it because it was... I run, it was unique, but it was like, I don't know. There was just something about the name. And it was, then I was like, you know, we have random names. You know, you hear unique name, you hear random name. Let's see, we got Stormy, which is a pretty cool name, though. We have Stormy. We Stormy have Daniels? No, um, Stormy Webster. <laughs> Stormy Webster? Okay. Um, Kylie Jenner, Kylie and Travis. Oh, hey, baby, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I think I so we, know what, we know what JD does on the internet. It <laughs> <laughs> ain't celebrity gossip. That's so <laughs> so I'm sure. like, So I'm like, the name was pretty interesting. Storm Daniel is pretty mainstream after the whole Trump thing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the name... I honestly I, never heard of her before until that. So, I was like, I liked the... You just knew her face. So, I was like, I liked the name, and it was just, like, a you. It was, like, a unique name, but I'm like, if my... If, like, I had a kid, and they had asked who they were named after, I'm like, surprise, you, you're named after... No, there's no one. <laughs> yeah. You're named after this, you're named after that, but I was like, I don't want a basic... Based. I don't think there are basic kid names, but I think like you know, like if you're a parent, you name you, you name your kid what you want to name your kid, and you probably have a bunch of stories. Hmm. <laughs> Do you still have stories? Of- have a name lined up? Oh yeah, of course. So my first kid's gonna be a junior. My second kid is gonna be Alexander, first name yep. uh, Hamilton, middle name. <laughs> and my third kid is gonna this be is called. Uh, Juan Zell. <laughs> Funny fact, I actually wanted to name. That's never. That's never. I like wanted to Juan, name Juan, Juan Zell. Zell. Like Denzel, but Juan Zell. You know what? I like it. Yeah. When, I had thought of, when I had thought of a name, it was, I had put the name. I was like, Jordan, mm. what do I get? It's, it's. It's black. It sounds like that. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know wait, why. wait. Does it sound black? You know, no, I, I don't even or, know why you're asking me. No, I think it was the name was because I feel like sometimes with a name, it's a black name. No, I feel like with a name comes stereotypes. Like when we hear a name, we just think of a stereotype. Like, like when, you a, when you hit a when you hit a name, Tyrone, what that what that sound like? Run. <laughs> oh, shit. prison cellmate! <laughs> wow. When you, hear, I think we just like when you hear of a name, like you have like a stereotype, like it's aligned with a stereotype. What was your example? Me? Said no. She gave it. Oh, Mel gave an example of like if you like. I feel like if you name someone, like I'm I about don't to know say, where this is going. if you name someone, <laughs> ready. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be no offense to any person named this. If you name someone, Rachel. Mm-hmm. What, stere- what stereotype do you think of? She's white. But she could also be. She could be Rachel Dozier. The lady who, <laughs> the lady who thought she Dozal. was black. Dozal or whatever. But she okay, was white. Wait, but I, have a name, I have a name that's going to be very controversial. Okay. Ooh. And in the beginning, I said it half jokingly or mostly jokingly. But the longer I've joked about it, the more I thought that Serious. if it wasn't already associated with a certain thing... It might actually be a very nice name. It's for a girl. Mm-hmm. Lay it on us. Starts with a C. Whoa. The name is <laughs> Chlamydia. No. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Nope. Don't. <laughs> don't throw it out yet. Don't. Don't. <laughs> I said, no. Don't think about what it means. Just it's hard. Listen to the name. <laughs> okay, give it to us again. Chlamydia. I thought Chlamydia. was a word. Chlamydia. Chlamydia. Nice. Not you, bad. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> right, Some, somehow, when people like I, I think I just had like heard of, like when people name kids, they like say random phrases. So they'll be like, um, like Junior, come to the kitchen. So they'll say like little phrases like that. Hearing him say this name, I'm like, imagine like you had your daughter and you're saying, Chlamydia, come to the. Yeah, chlamydia. 
Is, Chlam- is chlamydia here? I'm like, just like imagine like everyone give a round of applause. I'm like imagine like the chlamydia. This for claps. Girl. Give a round of applause for claps. I'm like imagine like this if this girl was a nickname. Claps. I'm like imagine if this girl was named chlamydia and like she's in school and like you know the teacher calling attendance chlamydia and then you just. Like in a high school. <laughs> middle, what's the middle name going to be? I always like Sakura. <laughs> Club Medica Th- Sakura. No, no, I want Sakura as another first. Oh, okay. Oh, that's oh, cool. okay. If I had to pick it for a middle name. So you only want daughters. Huh? You only want daughters. You don't want sons. I would want sons, yeah, but, but I've them. thought of girl names. Oh. <laughs> I think that's what we do. We you think of girl names me, and then you mm, think of then boy names. Really? Because yes. I was like, if I. I was like, if I. Like, this is going to be years and years. Emphasis on years, people. Emphasis on years. I like Annalisa. I was like, when I thought of a girl name, I was like, Bella. Which is which, which is pretty cool. No, it's not from Twilight. Nope. I was about <laughs> so to I was say like, that. So I was like, Bella. And I was like, that that's just a name. Or it was going to be Kayla. Bella or Kayla. Mm. Or it was, go, it was going to be, I, it was going to be a regular name. But it's going to be different. So Chloe, but spelled differently. So K L O I E. What about Barbie? But spelled differently. <laughs> that was a segue, actually, because to date the episode, I always try to date the episode. M- Mel and I actually recently saw the new Barbie movie. Oh, and I have a, and I had a question for you because we didn't really talk about it. Down there, with the Patriot. There was a mo- yeah, there, there was a moment in the movie where I laughed at something, and, and Mel was sitting next to me. She got mad at me. She looked at me like, hey. But uh, overall, what did you think of the movie? What was the part that you laughed at? I don't remember. Okay. (laughs) I don't know if you remember that part, but. So we did went to see the Barbie movie. It was actually a movie that I wanted to see. He was trying to tell, he was having me decide between Barbie or Oppenheimer. No, Barbie or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. It was Barbie. Okay, so I was like, do I want to see Barbie or do I want to see Oppenheimer? Because if you don't know, there's this thing called Barbenheimer because both of the movies released on the same day. Which so makes no sense to me just because they released on the same day. No, because people were like, oh, I saw you, both and I enjoyed both completely so like, oh, different you, kinds of movies. Yeah, that's the weird there's thing. So no, they were like, oh, are you going to see Barbie or are you going to see Oppenheimer? Are they going to do that for any movie that lands on the same day now? And it was <laughs> there. So when I saw the movie, was I was like, I never, I, I, I get that. I never really like, Don't it was kind of weird for me coming in like as a, I guess as an adult, but like still teenager, teenager, adult pretty much. And I had never, I don't think I've ever, I never played with Barbies. Mm. I think me, I never played with dolls. Like I had a few dolls, but I never like, even I played late. with Barbies. Like I never played with dolls. They like, my, my thing was like, if you know, like I was, I was like monster part. high brat dolls. I was like into that era. If I know some girls are going to know about it. So I was like monster high brat dolls and things like that. And, and when it came to the movie, I I would say I had, I'm like, because I feel like there's some movies you have a high expectations for, and then you see the movie, and then you're just like, what the, like, what the it heck was, was high that? standards, low expectations. <laughs> That's right. It and exceeded then, my expectations. And then going to there, and I, I thought mean, the it movie, had to. You had pretty low expectations. Because the way the commercials were for the movie, yeah, it was like. Standards. Yes, it met my standards. Damn. The way the commercials were for the movie, I'm like, okay, this movie. Like this seems pretty cool. Plus, it had Margot Robbie, and I loved her in Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. I got and, it uh, had Margot Simu something. Simu Liu from Chunky and there the Rings, and mm-hmm. it had Margot Robbie, and I loved her. Michael Sarah, I heard he's in it. Yeah, it had Margot Robbie. Right, he's I, Alan. I knew she was in this movie. I don't think I've seen the movie, but I think <laughs> you guys are going to know this movie. <laughs> With Leonardo DiCaprio, The Wolf of Wall Street. Who has? Oh, I love that movie. Oh, no. oh yeah, that's one of my favorites. Was he in it? Who? No, Leonardo? Margot Robbie is. Margot Robbie oh. is. She, she has a Brooklyn oh, okay. accent. The it's so wife. weird when people say oh, Brooklyn yeah. accent. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I had remember. loved her in... I had heard about that movie, so I knew she was in it, but I loved her in Suicide Harley Squad. Mm. Oh, yeah. Because it, I just loved her. That's I still haven't seen Birds of Prey. I saw it. Yeah. I saw it. Like and anything DC there was, It was weird. There was actually two guys next to me because I saw it with... Yeah. My mom, I thought it was my mom, but there were two guys, and they were seeing the whole movie, they saw it, and then after the guy was like, what the heck was that? Uh, that was and when so I, I when I went to see... You were so wrong about that. You're when I went so to see the movie, I was like, oh, like this is... Yeah, 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 no, I, I was like, this looks it. pretty... I was like, this looks pretty cool in the soundtrack, so I went to see it. There was... I'm going to try not to spoil it. There were was some... Barbie? Yeah, Barbie. And with no, Barbie... spoil it. Are you planning to watch it? 
Eventually. You're watching it? I'm not paying for that shit, though. Um, yeah, I'm not watching it. Allegedly. Movies. So with Barbie, there was a scene where because my friend is gonna buy it, mm. and I'm gonna watch it with my friend. Uh, I'm gonna wait till right. to Netflix under the same covers. So it was Barbie, and it was Barbie and Ken, and there's a scene where they go to. Did they have the black, the black, you know, Taekwon? I, I think his name was Derek. Derek. There, 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 there was, was a black, black Barbie. There was. was a black Ken. Yeah. No, he it has had a, like he different has a name. ethnicities, which was. He has a name. You said Derek. No, he said black Ken. What the hell is a black kid? I'm like, he has you a going name. a little too Ken, but black. That was an overcooked Ken. <laughs> and so when we saw the movie. I never watched that movie. There was a scene where Barbie, so Barbie has a task. She's trying to find this girl that's making her lose her stuff. Like she, you know, you know Barbie is always having high heels on. She always has her foot like this. She's trying to find the girl. That is was, that what the whole point of this no. movie is? No. Okay. No, it builds on a bigger thing, but I, I, for me, like... I exceeded your expectations. <laughs> for real. For me, I'm like, I liked, I liked the storyline. better line. than Twisted Metal. I'm like, for me, I liked the storyline. I liked the message behind yeah. it. For me, that's what... What message did you get from Barbie? I think what I liked about Plastic it... Plastic is bad. It kills the ocean. Sorry, go. <laughs> I'm sure I was about to think of what was it? The girl's name from Wild and Out that passed away. <laughs> like one good message is pretty much women Barbie. only belong in charge in fantasy land, and it's better when men are in charge in the real world. Um. Oh. In that case, so I, I think will the watch message you. Was, you didn't get that message. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there was a reason why when that thing came up, I was like, "Boy, you better not." And I had saw, it, and I think the scene, the method that I kind of got from it was like, "Oh, you're gonna grow up." That was one of them that I got, like, "Oh, you're gonna grow up. Like, you're not gonna be a kid forever." Mm. And because there was a scene where that's a horrible day when you realize that. <laughs> yeah, and I like that we could. It was, it was a positive day for me. I realized it when I had. I a think it was like there was like. You're, oh, you're gonna grow up. Like you're gonna grow up. You're not gonna be a kid forever. So I really looked. There was a scene. I'm like, I know this is gonna go. I was like picturing what was gonna happen. There's a scene where Barbie goes to like Barbie, aka Margot Robbie. She goes to figure out something, and Ken goes into this. I don't want to say blue collar, but like suits kind of place. An and, office building. An office building. Oh, and he white sees. Collar. Yeah, white collar. That's the word I was looking for. That's he sees awesome. all these. Things he sees like cowboys and he sees patriarchy, <laughs> and then he sees so all funny. this stuff. And then, like, I was like, This boy's about to laugh. <laughs> yeah, his ass some businessmen are talking, like a secretary, comes, uh, not now, Jen, like you know, like and like shh, like shushes her away. And Ken is like, Because <gasps> you know, he comes so from then, Barbie land where, yeah. So then it's like he gets oh, awakened it's by hilarious. that. And I'm like, Oh, okay. patriarchy. It's, he's like, The men are in charge here. It's I so was like, I funny. wanted to go oh, across because he it. was a beta in in, in, in Barbie Land. It's all women all in charge. Beta. So then, when he goes to the real world, he finds out that in the real world, men are in charge. Yeah. So for Barbie, oh, it was it. like, oh, it's hilarious. <laughs> I'm watching. For Barbie, it. it was like in Barbie Land, the president was a woman. Barbie, all of them were women. The president, all of that mm-hmm. stuff. But then when the she Supreme got Court, yeah, when she went to the real world, she was world. like, oh, you know. Women are catcalled, all of this and that. Yeah, she's she goes like, to the construction site. Oh my. Because in Barbie land, it's all female construction workers. So she goes to the construction site looking like Barbie. You know, the train where, hi, Barbie. And all, the- and all the guys disrespect her. Yeah. Pretty much all of that. And I, it was like, I saw that scene and what was happening. I think he was laughing and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, Ken is, Ken is now a, a guy of the patriarchy now. But no, 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 no. So on a more serious note, what they do very well is so Ken learns that it's the patriarchy, but then he tries to, um, I'm sorry, Ken learns that men are in charge. So he thinks that, oh, it's a patriarchy. So because he's a man, he has all these rights. So he tries to like do stuff and he's like, but I'm a man, but he can't get anything either because it's not, I'm know, just Ken. Men might be in charge in the real world, but it's still a meritocracy. So it doesn't matter that you're just a man. So they do. That's why a lot of people it like went over a lot of people's heads because everyone's like, "Oh, Barbie, Barbie." It was they like, had more of a social. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I think it was weird. Yeah, yeah. online it was like uh, backlash. Yeah, yeah backlash. Like whatever. It was stupid. It was. It was. It, they they, play, they, they make fun of both sides. They make fun of the women naivete and thinking they can be in charge. It makes fun of. Uh, the naivete <laughs> of thinking that because you're a man, you're just you're gonna make it. It's like no, you still have to be. The top of the men, right? To, valuable, exactly. 
That's right. But I think in the movie, there were actually like some scenes where I think it was a scene where one of the characters, she says the speech and then on TikTok, it goes like popular because of the speech of what she was saying, like about women and what they have to go through. So I think that was that was like probably one of my favorites for him. He's going to put the crickets. People just know. So I would say that I for me, I, I, I really liked the movie. Like I did watch some Barbie movies when I was younger. So I did like the movie and Margot Robbie. She did pretty good as Barbie. And on that Long note, Kendom. You said what? Oppenheimer. I know these two have Kingdom seen it. Kenda, I, I know these two. I, I saw it this morning. He sees it tomorrow. tomorrow. He saw it this morning. It was very, very Sponsor good. Sponsor us. Oppenheimer, very good movie. So Oppenheimer, I had heard of it. I was like, what the heck is this movie going to be about? I think it's about. The father of the atom bomb. The father of the atom bomb. And it has Cillian Murphy. And I was like, I recognize him because Peaky I was. Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Blinders. Peaky Blinders was one. And then I had recognized him because. Scarecrow. 28 days. If later. you ask me between DC and Marvel, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick both. That's just me. I'm gonna pick both. Then you're not picking. <laughs> yeah, ironically, I'm not picking, which is <laughs> and he was he played, I think it was the I think Scarecrow. it was like yeah, the psychiatrist slash scarecrow <laughs> in the Batman movie with I think Christian Bale, that's his name, and that one in that Batman movie. And I liked his character. So was that like, the best Batman? The, the, the guy like, to play Batman. I like Ben Affleck. Oh, mm. I like Ben Affleck. So I have a question for good. the. Oh, Sorry. who? Christian no, no, no. You know who who exceeded expectations? George yeah. Keaton. Michael Keaton. No. Oh. Um, Patterson. Robert, Robert Patterson. Uh, Robert Robert Patterson. I was like yeah. Twilight. I was Patterson. I was like Twilight. I didn't watch it. Oh no, 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 you slept on that one. Oh, that, oh yeah. The whole movie's good. The ri- oh everything. Yeah, the Batman. The, the Batman. And it's really good. It's a very interesting take on. Batman. Batman superhero movie as a whole is very like dark, dark and noir. Well, I like that. Better. You gotta okay, watch. who in your all of your opinion do you what is, do you think is the best Batman movie and who exceeded at bat, at playing Batman and who kind of like missed the mark a little bit? Dark Knight is the best Batman movie because fuck Batman, Heath, Heath Ledger. Ledger was so good as the Joker that it just it supersedes. Need the need for the Batman character, and it's the best Batman. Movie. I don't think you think of an Oscar winner when you think of a comic book movie. Yeah, until that. I I remember oh, that's, Heath that's Le- Heath that's Ledger true. as a Joker. I was like, a comic book like movie. movie. That's something just watch, have fun, but that's not Oscar worthy. I never actually. Surprising, it wasn't until a few years ago. I never actually knew that he he had passed away. So. They had a someone had accepted. Yeah, the he open. broke his back on the mountain. Yeah, and there was actually a. They, I don't know if you guys know. There's actually something <laughs> where I had talked about. There was a scene. Did he get an Oscar for that? Nope. He got <laughs> he got Oscar though. There was a scene <laughs> where I, I think I think you guys have seen it. I think it's in the Dark Knight where um, the Joker, Heath Ledger, he blows up a hospital, mm-hmm. and apparently when they were shooting, oh, it man. was an actual. Hospital, so they put that into the movie. That way, they wouldn't get a loss. Oh, I thought you were going to mention was when, the, when, thing the, didn't work. when the thing didn't work. Yeah, when the, yeah, the timing was off with the explosions. That, that was all uh, improv. It, uh-huh. it was improvisation. The way he acted, it like, wasn't scripted that way. Like, he was supposed to hit it. It was supposed to blow up. When y'all were talking about, I was thinking about that episode of Family Guy. And Peter Griffin like plays Heath Ledger in that scene. <laughs> Never, Never seen, seen it. it. It's hilarious. Link he's like, below. he said, oh, he, what, he, what he, said, he says, he's like, oh, yeah, what else I had to do today? It's uh, just hilarious. And then another fun fact about the movie, uh, semi-improv, is when Heath Ledger first uh, crashes the party and bumps into Alfred. Oh. Alfred had a line, but that was the first time Alfred saw Heath Ledger as the Joker, and he was rendered speechless, and they kept that take in the movie. When I he first one. crashes uh, Batman's party, well, Bruce Wayne's party in the movie. So it goes down that Wait, Heath Ledger was the best. Bruce Wayne is Batman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Breaking news. I so, so I. So who's the. There was, it was a two part question, right? There was. Um, was there two parts? There was the, the. I guess the worst one. Was it something like that? Yeah, it was. Who is. Who do you think mm, is the. George Clooney? Who do you think played oh. the best Batman? Oh, the worst Batman? No, I it was don't the, the best movie. Batman movie. And who do you think played Batman the best? Like, which actor played 
that oh, Ben Affleck the as Batman. And favorite. then who Batman. kind of best fell one? off the mark a little bit, just like kind of missed it. I'm gonna go with George Clooney because Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger as um, Mr. Freeze, Mr. Freeze yeah. was no, because there were some people that were like, you know, the Batmobile in this movie it was better, and this one it was. I'm like, it's a Batmobile. So I'm like, it's a car. Oh, Christopher Nolan's Batmobile is my favorite, hands down. Yeah. Mm, that Tumblr shit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was pretty bad. No, when the no, thing, it's when bad the thing gets destroyed, yeah. all of a sudden it turns into the motorcycle. I'm like, oh, because yeah. it's you know it's, it's, it's not traditional. And when to the motorcycle it, turns yeah. with the wheels tumbling on its ah, oh, it's like oh, it's fire. It was weird. I had actually thought of like some things. So I'm gonna go a little off track here. Ready? TV shows is the reboot always better than the original? No. Uh, not always, but I can see it happening. There's potential because technology gets better. Yeah, so I would say the first example, ready? Um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I was just thinking that uh, one. The reboot is better. I'm sorry. Oh, I need to watch it. I love it. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I need to watch it. Uh, but the I'm reboot, all, I don't is, know. It's not a know. comedy. Yeah, it's more serious. It's a drama. Mm-hmm. But they they do. Well, it I need to watch it then. The to... Oh man, it's good. Oh, see yeah. that's well, you. Oh, you'll love yeah, it. Yeah. You'll love it. <laughs> I feel like when it comes to reboots and original, I feel like the the elements of the show. I feel like sometimes there's certain things. But oh, then- what what movies? <laughs> what what TV shows from your childhood would you would like to see a reboot? Transformers, Beast Wars. Nah, they get back in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but Rat Trap wasn't in it. So I'm left wanting more. I was like, when I was younger, I was like, I hope they do a reboot of That's a Raven. They actually did. Oh, yeah, because so ain't know she's like a mom in there. Yeah, they actually they did, did a did. reboot with her as a mom. Yeah, yeah. And I thought I was like, it's gonna be pretty cool. No, there was one. I Even was, Stevens reboot. No, I saw a reboot, and I was like, Hillary Duff. Like I had said, I was a, um, I was a I Disney, just like her. Like I have said before, um, <laughs> just bring her back. I was a Disney kid. I was a Disney. I was a Disney kid. I, I grew up with Disney Channel. You know, Heroes. Like, like Jack Jackson. Heroes. The famous Jack Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, I grew up with Jack Jackson, Lizzie McGuire, Hannah Montana, all of that stuff. But here and not for, for I the first wanted, season. so they said they were going to do a reboot. I was like, I was a high school musical, you know, the movies. I was a high school musical kid. Like, I know all the dances, all the songs. I'm like, I, I was like a diehard of that. <laughs> yeah, <we're laughs> I was a diehard. I was in high school. That Favorite character? <laughs> Vanessa Hudg- Hudgens? I would say my favorite. Um, yeah, I'd probably say basic. All right, best Sharpay in person impersonation. The doll? No, Sharpay is uh, somehow when I. What's her name? Ashley Tisdale. Ashley, Ashley Tisdale. Tisdale. What's your best Sharpay impersonation? Go. I don't remember anything about it. Wait, I, I remember it, TV. and she had said it was a scene that. Bobby, right? Mm-hmm. She was like no, because I think girl. her character was kind of seen as like. The snobbiest one. The funniest thing is that in the beginning they always put that like she's mean, and then near the end she's like she goes with them, like she's she collapses with them. So I think my best one that I can do is probably when she screams. When she screams, it's kind of hilarious. When she screams, it's actually pretty hilarious to me because of what she's doing. You I mean, you don't have to. I was, no, 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 no. Bro, I, I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> I thought you could do the. What's the no, the my warm favorite one when she did the. Oh. There we go. <laughs> That's okay. the best I can do. Like, she did the. I can't even do it. It, yeah. it took me a while to do it. So that was it. And with her brother, Ron, I was like, he was kind of my favorite character. I feel like they should have oh, done a storyline with him. Like a, like a spinoff? Apparently, there was a rumor that there's a, a clip of something and someone had put it. Um, Ryan is gay. Mm. So they up and I'm like, I it, it was a little too early. That's you know. That's now. That would have been perfect. Yeah, now. And no, I was not like, getting no. You know. So they had did um High School Musical, and I was like Troy Gabriella. I wasn't. I was. Like, Gabriella was her name. Troy Gabriella. I was in. That that was my movie. I was like that is my movie. I know all of them. So you want to see did, a reboot of High School Musical? They actually did a reboot called High School Musical: The Musical: The Series. I know, long ass title. And it's pretty much based off the same movie, but they're at the same high school. You same characters? Oh, no, it's not the same character. This is why I call High School Musical the Musical of the Series. It's the same. It's the same high school. You can actually go to the high school. I think it's in Salt Lake City, Utah. So, like that part somewhere. No, uh, JD has a stay within a stay. Uh, how many? How many yards is a stay away from? 
Yeah, that's all except you did. And it's pretty much the students. <laughs> not true. Not true. Not true. Not true. <laughs> Don't be starting narratives. So it's the Start a family students. watchdog. You won't find me. <laughs> so it's the students of the high school, and they're in the high school, and they're doing a musical. Oh, Try to guess what I the musical is. <laughs> high school musical. You heard the same thing I did. So it's high school musical. So they're yeah, like, okay, canceled who? here. So I'm like, who? They were like, oh, who's gonna play Troy? Who's gonna play Gabriella? Right, so same characters. So pretty uh, much, <laughs> no. So pretty much, these students they were playing. They were gonna play the characters. And at first, when I heard it, I'm like, I, I don't know about this because sometimes they be like bombing, and I'm like. Sometimes they make the original better than the reboot, and I'm like, something tells me this might not be good. And to my thing, I actually enjoyed a few. And what was it? I think one of the stars, the one that played Chad, the basketball guy, um, I think his name Corbin Blue, he actually had the same thing. He was he had doubts about it. He was like, oh, I don't know if this is going to be good because of what, like the pedestal that they have of High School Musical. I agree. And, I agree. They should leave it right where it was. Uh, and then he day. had, and then he had thought, and he was like, oh, this is good. So now in the new season, there's actually some episodes where he goes in. Well, spoilers, right? Don't Who, spoil Corbin? Don't spoil They're bringing Corbin it. back? We might watch it. No, no, no spoilers. Come on. If y'all bring <laughs> Corbin back, I'm going to watch it. Does he still got the hair? He actually. Everyone said, that had hair, they cut it off. Yeah, have y'all seen Zac Efron lately? He looks like no. the Hulk, like the old 80s Hulk. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. when I saw yeah. Zac Efron, I'm like... Oh, his hair is fried. He, 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 not, mm-hmm. he, he doesn't look the same way he looked in 2006. I'm like, mm-hmm. most of them are in, like, in their 30s and stuff like that. So this was 2006. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I'm, it's like, is he doing like a... It's like, is, is yeah, he doing a, a movie or something? said he had surgery. He might be playing the Hulk. That's what I'm saying. He looks like the Hulk. I mm-hmm. think they I said he had surgery on his jaw or something? Because I'm like... Ah. I'm like, what the heck happened to He Trump takes Wilson? his craft very seriously. <laughs> He's a method actor? To have surgery for a role? Oh, yeah. No, exactly. I, I, I think it was he had an accident with his jaw. Or it was something like that. Oh, <laughs> no, he used the jaw too much. What's up with the hair, bro? <laughs> yeah, he looks like the old Hulk. <laughs> he does. Luke, Luke for, for, for right now. Mm-hmm. They bring him back Bar- Barney, but he's going to be CG, CGI. And Trenton. You said what? Oh. <laughs> Wait, the little white boy? No, <laughs> that's the poster you have in your room, right? Nah, play. Don't play with me, son. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I don't even have no links down below. <laughs> any, 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 any okay. Sh- um, show. Top three favorite TV shows. It, of all time. Eric, of all time. Yeah, of all West time. Westworld, Game of Thrones, Chuck. Did you watch Westworld to the end? Not yet. Okay, okay so stop. Westworld, Game of Thrones, and Chuck. Did you watch and Game TV of Thrones shows can also yes. be anime. <laughs> still up there? Mm-hmm. And TV shows can also be anime. So I really be. can't pick top three. Honestly. Sword Art Online, right. No Game, No Life, Naruto, One Piece. That's too many shows. Oh, I would probably not pick Adam. Breaking Bad is up there. Mm. Breaking Ooh. Bad is top three. Yeah, what else? it's hard to take those out, bro. I was like wondering if he had seen The Last of Us. Probably Runway? Yeah. The Last of Us is pretty, that's too new. To Runway model? Make. No. No, because I knew with, with Game of Thrones, I knew he had seen it. <laughs> I don't know what he's into. Winter is coming. <laughs> he's <laughs> Project <laughs> Runway? Project <laughs> Runway. I knew what you were trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, it's crazy. I have to pick shows that they start, they didn't have to start off good. Sons of Anarchy. Have, Game of Thrones. Mm. Jo- oh, Sons of Anarchy. Game of Mines. Thrones. Have you seen mine? I, I was, I was, I, I'm, I'm scared. Just to, ended. I'm scared to get into it. It's just ended. It's because five seasons, you can do it. Because then I'll binge. Do it. Okay. Then, okay. Benjamin ain't ever heard anything. Black Mirror, if that counts. <laughs> That's right. Black Mirror. You know, I I do love it. But have, have you watched the new ones? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I haven't. Uh, is it good? No. Yeah. No spoil. No spoilers. ML, your favorite TV shows? That's <laughs> High school <laughs> musical, the series, something. Oh, my God. I think, <laughs> I think it's going to be. Um, all right, because with my favorite TV shows. Baby Shark. I'm not going to like some. I don't really see TV shows out a lot because I don't have anyone out. I see Netflix. Netflix is me. That's so, still TV shows. Yeah. yeah, I know it's still TV shows. Does recess count? So sometimes there's like some TV shows. Like there are some TV shows. I see a wide variety from different ethnicities. There's some like, I, w- I don't want to say like the um, black TV shows that I actually do see. Okay. <laughs> didn't know we were making designations on the, it was the type weird. of TV shows. So it was like, um, you know, House of... Like House, House of, of Cards? Pain. No, House of Pain. Pancakes? House of Pain is one. No, The Blacklist. House of Pain is definitely one from Tyler Perry. House of Pain is definitely one of my favorites. Those are black. Any media movie, even though it's a movie, it's my favorite. Um, what was it? Um, so you're one of those. 
So what was it? I Ooh, I, I, I actually, I actually have a favorite um, TV show. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I actually have a favorite um, TV show, The Blacklist, with mm-hmm. um, James Spader. That's like one of my that's favorite. A cla- that's a good one. Has a good that, character. That's one of my favorite. Oh yeah, I used shows. to watch a lot of. And shows. I feel I never actually knew this. That James Spader, he actually voiced Ultron in Avengers: Age of Ultron. So I, I actually had liked the show. It's like one of my favorite shows. Like sometimes I'll rewatch an episode over again, which is a bad habit of mine. <laughs> I rewatch like some episodes of a show. I'll rewatch it, even though I already know what happens. But I just rewatch it for the joy. And I liked his character because I feel like he he as an actor, like he can make a character himself. So he can put himself in the character because Raymond Reddington, and these you know what it is. He's sarcastic, but he has all these things. But I feel like with an actor, like if you uh, let them put themselves as the character, it can kind of be better so the blacklist is definitely one of my favorites i can't believe it actually ended because my and on that note segue <laughs> it was, it was oh, the- <laughs> yes but uh yes i was getting ready to do that and the, what the segue is is that mel is actually working on a novel and this novel is based in the 1920s okay you want me to say it? yes please so um i actually never knew he was going to voice this so it is a solo talk. We do, we do breaking news here. That's right. right. So I actually, I actually have been working on book novel. It is a novel, and it's pretty much one of my favorite authors of all time is Chloe Gong, and she's one of my favorite authors. She wrote this book. It's on the Secret Shanghai Universe. She basically wrote this book about. We want your book. No, 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 no. No, I'm, I'm basing. I'm, uh, okay. I'm building. I'm always building. It's so weird, me. So she wrote this book when she was in college at UPenn about gangster families in Shanghai in the 1920s. And one of the families was Russian and the other was Chinese. And I fell in love with the book series. I have my favorite characters that it, she kind of, in a way, inspired me to write it because I had a thought one day. It was hot. I'm like, if you've been living, if you've been in Florida for a while, the heat is crazy. It's like 103 outside. And she people on guitar being like, "Oh, that's cold." <laughs> <laughs> she actually kind of inspired me in a way, and I thought of it, and I was like, "What if there were?" I'm like, "Maybe I might be wrong with this." I'm like, "What if there were Dominicans in the 1920s?" There were in Dominican Republic. No, no, no. But you're, you're saying the, like in the 1920s, America. So I was like, "What if there were there Dominicans?" Were. But oh, like, sorry. but they were, you know, like. Yeah, so I kind of established in society. Yeah, and have, so I was like, what if they were in the 1920s? So I started to build on that, and I don't want it to be like, oh, like I took her. No, and it's kind of like Romeo and Juliet. I didn't want it to be like, oh, I took her story and I tried to make it my own because I hate people that take credit for someone else's work and they try yeah. to make it their own. Well, everyone's like, inspired by yeah. it. So know. I pretty much got inspired by her, and I was like, what if there were like Dominicans in the 1920s and the Roaring Twenties, gangsters, all of that stuff. So I started. Like, I was just, like... Yeah, I, a few chapters already. Yeah, I can review chapters. So it's a dual, like, a duology, so dual point of view. So one of the characters, um, um, reminder, a little known in there, the names are going to be changed because, like, the last name. So originally, the name was going... So the first names are still the same. The last names are going to change them because I wanted to make them... I wanted to put my ethnicity, so I wanted to put my Dominican influence into it. So the first one was... Bella Palacios. And I realized my mom had actually told me that's not a Dominican name. I don't know if it is, but I had thought of it. I was like, I need a name. So I was just thinking about random names, and Palacios just came to one. And then the next one was Javier. I don't know where I got it. First of all, Javier Montoya? It was, yeah, Javier Montoya. And pretty much. No relation? (laughs) Javier Montoya. And then when I had actually started typing a few chapters, and then I had like spoken to Manny and he actually he actually liked it he could see it so it's pretty much Romeo and Juliet is one of I feel like one of the most famous plays from William Shakespeare but I feel like it's everyone most people know about it because you they teach about it in high school and I was like I kind of wanted to put my Dominican influence in it I was like I want to make something like that and that's why you know we like to have reasons to bring people back so when Mel has completed this book, that's when you'll make your repeat yeah. offender. Yeah, so I was like, so I was like, do, it was like, this was something I thought of. I was like, I had an idea on it. I was like, I don't think this will be a book. And then I started like 
I spoke a few like chapters and then Manny said he liked it. My aunt had said she liked it. She was like, she could see this as a book. And I had realized I had a gift because I feel like myself, I am a good writer, but I felt like I was like, I'm able to tell stories. So I was like the way that I had described it and the way Manny was able, he was like able to picture it. So I did a lot of, so I did a lot of that one of the things I did I did a lot of research for it so I wanted to make it as close to the 19 like the roaring 20s because it, it is the 1920s but it's the roaring 20s even though I was not born in that decade but something about the 1920s and gangsters and speakeasy there's just something there's just something that I've loved about it you know like, the meme of the it's the white guy who's like blinking he's like <laughs> uh, yeah. I just had that. He kind of no, like, looks like Dexter. Yeah. <laughs> it might be Dexter. It was 19. 19- it actually might be him. <laughs> yeah, so it was 1920s. So I wanted to make it as close to the Roaring 20s as I could. So I was like, this is going to take place in New York. So I made it as close. I was looking up like pictures of New York in the 1920s. I wanted people to be able to actually picture it like, when they were reading it. And when I had wrote it, I was like, I, I have a pretty good thing for showing Tully. So it's pretty much a Romeo and Juliet. With Dominicans in the 20s. With like the Dominic- Roaring 20s. With Dominicans in the Which Roaring 20s. 20s. So their <laughs> their last names are going to well, be. the 19th. Because I was cause just, when I thought of the character names, I was just like brainstorming. So I was like, what could be a good name for like a Romeo? And then I started thinking. And Manny was actually going to be a character. In the book, no more spoilers. You could have named the whole yeah, book. Say, yeah, you gotta save something for save something for them yeah, to so want to buy. It was it was pretty good, and I had wrote it. So now they do get writers. Well, you didn't finish it yet. I didn't. I didn't finish it. I'm still writing it. So far, I have like, a future episode. And I'll get you exactly because I'll get you with audio. He can help you with the whole one, ebook process. Get it on Amazon. Like That's one, right. two. I got like three chapters. So it's a duology. So one chapter is. Bella, the other is... It, it changes perspective. It changes perspective. So you kind of can see, like, okay, this is Bella. So it kind of, like... And you kind of follow Javier. along because I wanted it to be a book where, like... there You know, there's some books where it's, like, it's stuck in the same chapter and it's, like, the same thing repeatedly. So I kind of wanted it to be followed around. And when I wrote it, when I started writing, I was like, this this might this could be a pretty good novel. And people liked it. So when I wrote it, there was a lot of influence. Like, one of them, the Speakeasy Club, is called... Um, you're spoiling the whole book. I'm not even gonna buy it at this point. You don't want to give too much. You gotta, you gotta. Okay, so I'll this just, is the audiobook version, right? Yeah, now. I'll show like, <laughs> a, I'll say like a, a few, a few things on it. Um, well, you gave the plot, essentially. Yeah, I gave. Like, what's so your I'll final give you, thought on the book? Do you want to? You want me to say the plot? Do you guys want to? No, no, not the plot. Like, do you because you ha- you want to leave them wanting more, so they'll buy the book. So, yeah, so it is Romeo and Juliet in the Roaring Twenties, Dominican. There's a lot of there's a lot of Dominican things like like influence on it. That's what I want. A lot wanted. of violence, a lot of nudity. You're going to love it. So it was pretty oh. good. Yeah. I actually wanted to describe one of the characters because I'm like, I don't know if you guys would, but I think I actually told Manny what one of the characters was like. Save and it for the book. Save it but for the book. I can't wait to when they make it into a movie. No, because then by then the you're not craziest to play the thing character. for me was that when I while I was reading it to Manny, he was like picturing it like as a movie. I'm like, I actually pictured it as a movie. So I was like, when I was doing the characters, I wanted it to be even though I wasn't born in the 1920s. There's something about that era of Roaring Twenties. Like I always heard about Al Capone and all these gangsters and stuff and speakeasies. Um, you like, should watch. Um Sopranos? No, Wait. Boardwalk Empire. Oh. No, if I could say what city. the book is, Manny had actually said something about what the book was. I was like, it's it's like a combination of Romeo and Juliet, but it's like if the Sopranos met Romeo and Juliet. Mm-hmm. So it's like okay. a combination of the both. That's not, that's and not, that I'm like, actually, I didn't think I was actually going to write a book. I never expected like me turning to write a book. I'm like, when I was juggling careers, I was like, oh, I want to be an author. I want to be a surgeon. I was like, now oh. you found your passion. So I was like, just imagining I'm like, I'm in college going for an associate's blah, blah, blah. and I'm writing a, I'm like, I'm like, I started writing a book. So I'm actually pretty excited to see how this book goes. And if, cause I know, you're going to come back, give a discount. So I'm like, I know, I know, I know, <laughs> the promo code, promo code, 1020. There we go. I know some authors, like they have the thing, like the, 
I, I, I forgot the name of it, even though I read a lot of books. They have, like, you know, for this, for my husband, for my daughter. That's dedication. Yep. Yes. The de- there's the word I'm looking for. Dedication. I Dedicated feel, to Red Solo Talk. I feel like if I w- the dedication I would probably put um, in, like, influence, like, my favorite author, I would say, like, she was an influence for me because mm. she kind of inspired it. But I would also, like, say, like, I'm not going to say, like, who the dedication is for, but I feel like when I want. you don't want to hurt nobody, villains. Yeah, just let me write the forward. One fifth. <laughs> like one fifth. That's like one, one fifth of it. But I think with I was like I never expected me to write a novel to write a book. But I think the main thing that I want people to get from final this final thoughts, final thoughts. Mm-hmm. People or readers to get from this is like I want them to be like able to like enjoy it. But I also want it to be like something like they can read and like like you never heard of that like like what. Well, Someone born in 2004 writing books about, like, the 1920s. Like, usually you hear, like, oh, your parents. But I'm like, you know, like, uh, it was pretty interesting for me writing the book. So I'm actually, I would say I'm excited for the book to come out. And I can't wait for people to read it. I don't have the title yet. The title is still uh, TBD, but I'm actually pretty. Throw a bomb. Nice. (laughs) Nice, You heard it here first. You got to look forward to Mel's first novel. It's going to be about... Dominicans in the 1920s, the Roaring Twenties, gangsters, Romeo and Juliet mixes with, uh, what was the name of the author? The, your favorite author? What was it? Um, uh, Chloe Gong. Chloe Gong. So, so okay. yeah. look out. And that's going to be the re- re- your repeat uh, visit to Red Solo Talk will be to promote this uh, novel, which will have yeah, a name I by then, like- of course. So, without further ado, first time on the pod. How do you feel? How do you feel doing, having done the pod? Do you feel good? I feel at first I had like anticipation. I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go. I'm like recording me. I'm like, this is gonna be on YouTube. I'm like, I don't wanna look crazy. How does it feel now that it's done? Now that it is done, I, well, one of my goals for this year was to do new things, new things out of my comfort zone. And I did that. I've been doing that. So I wanted to. There you go. So I wanted to do, I wanted to do new things. That's just something that like I wanted to do. Like before I'm 20, I'm like, I was like, you're going to do new things. Like you're going to do things that you were afraid of doing before. You're going to just do them because of that. And I, I was like, I was nervous. I was, I was actually chewing gum before I got here just to calm my nerves. That doesn't work. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not speaking as a doctor. I'm like, that's just what something I do to calm my nerves. I got a whole pack of gum, and I was nervous. I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go. I was like, I don't know what they're gonna hear, and I. I actually found it pretty exciting because, like, I do have a podcast of my own, but I wanted to go on someone else's podcast, and I was like, oh, I don't know any. Surprise! I got family members that got a podcast. So it was pretty, I I thought I was like, oh, look, I don't know how this is going to go, but I would say I have a Oh yeah, then you gotta clap it up. You just there did it. You just, just, <laughs> just, you just, you came in. And yeah, to be honest like, with you, you, I didn't even know. I was like, I don't know how this is gonna last. I'm like, I don't know if I can last. And I'm like looking at the time stamp. I'm like two hours, two and a half, two and a half. I'm like, I just did that with the help of all the minions. So is that your final thoughts? Do you have a final piece of advice for the for the audience? Anything you? I would, like I was at first I was nervous I was like I had the anticipation I was nervous I'm like I'm a very sharp person normally but I was like now I'm like I'm kind of I was excited but I'm like I actually really enjoyed it I'm like I laughed a lot there we go that's that's that's, JD? that's what's up that's what's up I had fun I always have fun you, I, you gonna do it again me. oh yeah you got souvenir cut this time so you I ain't did. even going back up the end did you like that that's right that's how we dance. That's how we do it. <laughs> we you do know, it. I'll just say, you know, this has been a family episode, you know, surrounded by family, recording our family, recording our hangouts. Uh, Kava, I <laughs> fucks with you. I'm going to ch- give you never another again. chance. Never again. <laughs> I'm going to give you another chance. I'm going to test out this whole reverse tolerance okay, that I've I'm never heard of. Um, dear and Kava, you ruined my taste buds. <laughs> <sincerely>. <laughs> so I'm going to give Kava another chance. I want to get the whole experience, go to the lounge, have that social ceremonial aspect to it. Try some of the different cocktails, see if we could get some of that taste better. I actually wanted to try new things, and I've actually tried two new things. One exactly. Be, one being on a podcast, and two, Kava, huh? um, rest in peace of my taste but Kava, that's a <laughs> no for me. That's like a... Like zero for me, um, but well, uh, you know, I definitely appreciate it. This was really cool, you know. As a uh, one thing, I like to uh, first sober episode, first <laughs> sober episode. That's for damn sure. I'm 
I'm gonna give Kava another chance. Maybe, maybe uh, that reversed because I was there. I don't, I don't know, guys. Let's go back to tequila. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate you guys, you know, being able to sit down and and, uh, and allowing us to share, you know, because family isn't always blood. It's, it's the people you choose to be around, so that's very important. And um, I'm looking. Yeah, I don't think that deserves no bomb. I think that should be like an applause or something because there is one you hear that. <laughs> But we, uh, we uh, check out her sound effects on <laughs> Life with Mel. <laughs> there's like a pl- like applause sound effect. Um, there's actually one of a plane. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we definitely enjoyed it. We definitely hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, make sure to stay tuned, and y'all make sure to go check out uh, Life with Mel. Yep, Life with Mel. This was another Red Solo talk. Another episode, Red Solo Talk, with your boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the host that know the most. Manny, with special guest JD, hey. and last Hello. but not least, the very, very beautiful, very, oh, stop. <laughs> very amazing, very articulate Mel. Clap it up. So until next time, bye. bye. <laughs>